scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. You ask the arm robber why he's stealing, he tells you he wants to succeed. Correct? Ask someone in the hospital why they don't want to die. They believe that they have a future and they are, there's so much they want to do with their lives. And I'm teaching us this because I do not want us to waste our time shadow boxing, trying to find meaning and relevance. Life was not designed to be lived by guesswork. You don't have that much time to guess. You have to walk through life with a level of exactness and certainty. If you believe that, say amen. amen. The first price we discussed last week, just a quick recap, is the price of knowing God. Daniel 11 verse 32, the B part. It says, but the people that do know their God, the first price any believer has to pay is the price for an encounter with God. Not just principles. Principles are only useful when there is an encounter with a person. Take note. When you begin to pursue principles and mysteries and you do not have an encounter with God, it will be vain babblings. It will make you arrogant and eventually your results will destroy you. It is your encounter with the person of the Christ through the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit that makes every other result you get relevant. There are people who become rich and leave God. There are people who become influential and leave God. That's because they had access to principles, but they skipped the place of encounter. So the starting point of any kind of result and that which will last is an encounter. Everybody say an encounter. You must pay the price to know God. Please get the teaching, last week's teaching. I don't want to go over it again. Knowing God requires time. Knowing God requires passion. Knowing God requires prioritizing Him above all things. Carnality is not having money. Carnality is not having materials. Carnality is an attachment. The attachment you have. A poor person can be carnal. You've just not had enough physical materials to help you demonstrate the carnality. Are we together now? And um, there are many, many carnal people in the body of Christ attached to things, possessions, money, cars, material things here and there. And um, you must pay the price to know God. Number two is the price of genuine submission to authority. I taught us about that. And I'm glad that many people are beginning to understand this. There is an imbalance of authority there is an imbalance of submission that has been taught for many years in the body of Christ. Is the imbalance of usurping people's rights and making men demigods. That's an error. It's unscriptural. There is a place for submission. And I took out time to explain to us that the purpose of authority is for protection, provision, and promotion. Nobody promotes himself. Is that true? And um, I know we are all in Christ, but the election of grace has separated people into strata. You violate God's system of blessing, you will pay for it. Everybody has access to the Christ, but God has designed that there is a system by which men receive results. One of it is authority. So there is an imbalance of authority where people do not have rights again. They don't have brains. Men of God become the gods of people. They tell you when to eat. They tell you when to have another child. They tell you, no, 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 all the, that is rubbish. 
is just the insecurity of men on rampage so they spiritualize it and carve out a group of people that can find victims of their insecurities that's imbalance praise the lord paul said follow me as i follow christ in other words if at any point you don't find me following christ do not follow me i want us to be very very clear about the concept of authority there are many insecure men and women of god well-meaning but they carry their complexes from poor backgrounds they get filled with the holy spirit and you know africa is a very loyal continent we are loyal to men of god we are loyal to pastors and churches and sometimes it is that loyalty that has become the unbecoming of people they were doing well until a man came into their life in the name of fatherhood and mentorship and wrecked and destroyed their life they made people to leave jobs when they shouldn't leave jobs. They made people to not take drugs when they should take drugs. They made people to all kinds of things and destroy people's lives. Separated husbands and wives when they have no business separating because of some kinds of hilarious vision. So we must be careful. Submission is important. Authority is important. So that's one side of the imbalance. The other side of the imbalance is those who uh, in a bid to address what i just explained now tell people there's no such thing as authority everybody can access god no you fight the body of christ you lose there is a system with which the church was built are we together the bible tells us that the church was built like a building he said every house is built by some man then he says god is the builder of all our walk with god is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant and i've explained it to us the way that god operates on earth is that all his multifaceted dimensions are resident within individuals they become the portals through which a generation experiences that dimension of god so prosperity for instance god finds a man opens his understanding to an unusual dimension of god in that area and then makes that man a symbol a portrait a representation of that possibility so that every other man on earth who must enter that dimension must do it in alignment to both god and that system he has set up you will never enter that di you may believe in god but if you do not believe in what that individual represents and submit to it you will never enter that dimension no man will work greatly in the healing ministry insulting benny Hinn. no man will work greatly in prosperity and faith insulting kenneth copeland even if you believe you have more revelation than him he's more than a human being he's a system that communicates a dimension of god's reality the bible is full of mysteries and um I wish I had time. I don't want to go back to walk all of those. Remember, there was a time when the nation of Israel wanted to fight war. They were fighting war. And Moses, these guys had their swords. But behind the scene, there was a man who was lifting his rod. Is that true? The Bible says, as he lifted the rod, although the people were the ones doing the physical fighting, but the results were controlled by one man's hand. Now watch this. The Bible says a time came when Moses' hand was getting weak. The wisest thing to do is to say, Sir, you are an elder. Just sit down. Let me help you. Is that not true? The wisest thing to do is to help the man. Not everything can be done by everybody. Ask Saul why he lost his throne. He said, what is there? Somewhere we can't be waiting for you. Are you so special? Give me the knife. And when Samuel came, he said, Saul, what have you done? He said, you would have allowed me come. God would have preserved your throne forever. But now you have done foolishly today by this foolish act. Violating rankings in the spirit, your throne is taken from you. Authority is real. Not everybody you see is a pure human being. I don't know how to make you believe this, but it's true. For this cause, many are weak, many are sick. People's pride has stopped them from entering simple, cheap victories because of their refusal to understand authority. It's not human worship. There are some battles that are needless if you fight them. If you fight those, if you ever fight those battles, it's because you are not wise. Are we together? Yes.
truly speaking there are some battles that are products of foolishness Moses's hand began to go down the Bible never said their sword stopped being sharp just because a man's hand was going down they started defeating them and they said look whatever we would do to support your position for the sake of our victory we'll do it I know what many people in our generation will do Moses you are not the only one God is talking to please help me with that rod Jerry and hold it and watch the rod kill you first it looks simple until you see what is happening in the spirit a man can say God prosper you say what is there is it not just positive conversion you too God prospers you and then you don't see any result the law of authority all the blessings of God come through the scriptural chain of authority it is from Aaron's head down to his beard then it goes down to his skirt praise the Lord when authority is done properly it produces wonders. when there is any violation of it whether on the part of the supposed spiritual father or on the part of those who submit to that grace there will always be problem proximity is not submission availability hanging around a grace is not genuine submission submission is not weakness please listen understand this it is not a proof of weakness only a foolish man of God will take advantage of people because of their submission to his grace are we together the law of authority learn it use it command cheap victories in your life it's not idolatry when it is done within the confines of scripture it is not idolatry number three we have a lot to do today the third price that we must pay to produce extraordinary results is the price of mental transformation the price of mental transformation numbers chapter 13 please help us media it's a long reading from verse 25 the price of mental transformation the sacrifice of upgrading your paradigm the laborious sacrifice through the agency of the word and every other material whose thoughts are consistent with the word take note first the word of god scripture and then every other material intellectual material whose thought line is consistent with the word of god qualifies to be an instrument of mental transformation there are many believers who study the bible but they do not study the works of people who love god and who have paid the price to access these laws listen let me tell you this the law of the mind is an irrefutable principle if you must command results no matter how spiritual you are your life will eventually be a reflection of your understanding your life your physical environment will inevitably be a reflection of your understanding may not happen immediately but over a given period of time it is safe to say your experience the sum total of your experiences spiritually financially intellectually sociologically is a reflection of both your paradigm and your understanding if you lack money forever it is because there is an understanding you do not have if you are fighting with everybody forever there is an understanding you do not have are we together there can be momentary failures and setbacks agreed but when over a long period of time your experiences are the same is proof that your mindset is delivering that result say amen numbers chapter 13 we are reading from verse 25 to 33 this was the encounter of moses and the 12 spies listen and they returned from searching the land after 40 days we are reading to 33 and they went and came to moses these are the people now and aaron and to the congregation of the children of israel unto the wilderness of paran to kadesh and brought back word to them listen and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land and they told them and said we came unto the land whither thou sentest us and surely it flowed with milk and honey and this is an evidence this is the fruit of it nevertheless listen this is a mindset speaking now everyone's communication is a window into your understanding you can fake it for a while 
but with time you will speak your true convictions nevertheless this is a faulty mindset interrupting the word of god the people that dwelleth in the land and the cities are walled and are very great and moreover we saw the children of anak there the amalekites dwell in the land of the south the hittites and the jebusites and the amorites dwell in the mountains and the canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of jordan and caleb said kai keep quiet what is all this all you people are just bringing negative was i not there with you we saw it we just brought the fruits and caleb stilled the people before moses and said moses as far as i'm concerned this is doable let us go up at once and possess it why for we are well able someone prophesied to yourself i am well able say it again i am well able he said we are able to overcome in other words i'm not refusing it's a challenge he didn't say i'm able to go through it no you don't deny the real boy say we are able there is capacity within us to bring those giants down hallelujah this is the power of a transformed mind a man sits down and prophesies doom to himself because of his mindset i can't make it i am from kaduna state i am from plateau state i am from benway i am from kogi people from our family don't rise is a reflection of your understanding 31 but the men that were up with him said we be not able to go against the people why for they are they've not fought oh. they are, they fought in their minds and were defeated already the result of their defeat was that for we they are stronger than we and they brought up an evil report listen now what kind of report poor thinking will always make a man communicate what god calls an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of israel saying the land though we have gone through gone to search it a land that eaten up the inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature the last verse and there we saw the giants the sons of anak which come of the giants and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers and so we were in their sight the anakims never say hey grasshopper the people call themselves grasshoppers the same way you call yourself um, a weak failure the same way you call yourself all kinds of things there is a price to pay to produce extraordinary results let me tell you nobody is born with a transformed mind transformation is a spiritual investment in case you see certain people confident and commanding results again and again it is nobody is transformed by default ladies and gentlemen it is the labor dimension of the world that brings us to a point where we adjust our understanding we've done many teachings aimed at building our mindsets and our understanding have taught us how paradigms are formed the first way paradigms are formed uh, through our cultural backgrounds we come from different cultures and then our environmental conditioning we've lived among people who have been poor and broke we have lived among people who have little or no respect for spiritual things we have lived among people who do not value the power of the word of god and unconsciously we have imbibed their way of life and their way of thinking as a paradigm a set of belief a plane of interpreting things your reality is interpreted by your perspective and if you do not allow the word of god alter your perspective you will fail in life in a way that you cannot imagine listen i don't care what physical effort you are exerting your life will eventually be a reflection of your mindset there are many people who have failed before they started it was very clear from their mindset and their thinking that they were not going to make it so they were not surprised when they failed it was just a confirmation of a defeat that had been in their minds are we together we were like grasshoppers so they called themselves 
the bible tells us how to think philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 it says finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise do what thinking and wishing are two different things wishing is just mesmerizing on a result that you will never happen in your life but thinking is constructing your mind your understanding many people do not think well they don't even think at all and if they do they think on negative things listen to me much more than your physical activity focus on making sure that your mindset has been constructed to produce victory are we together you were insulted growing up you probably were abused growing up and it put something in your mind about men and you keep saying every man is a devil every man is no not every man is a devil in your world and based on your experience all the people you have encountered are bad but why don't you expand your horizon how about prosperity there are so many people when you tell them will you prosper they say when i read what <laughs> when i read what because a society has programmed your mind that your wealth is entirely dependent on just what you studied so people make they go out of their way to do malpractice because they hope that by so doing it will give them an edge correct what do you believe about yourself what do you believe about god what do you believe about life you've heard me say it again and again it never ceases to amaze me those who hang themselves or, co or commit suicide I don't think I hate myself that much. Ah, I understand quarreling myself, but to hang yourself is, um, is, is quite, you must be assisted by a spirit. You become a reflection, a physical reflection of your most dominant thoughts. The thoughts that construct your understanding eventually become your life bring me someone who is as weak and beggarly and as villager as anything provided that person's heart is open to receive and learn give me six months with that person of thorough upgrading of his mind i'm not talking of business i'm not talking of whatever just allow me to change and alter that person's mind if i never see that person in my life again i can tell you staking my life that that person will be a success regardless of what his life is at that moment now here is the reverse accumulate a lot of physical things to hide the true state of your mind your understanding will take them away from your life until you look like what you believe are we together now let's do a little experiment look up don't feel bad how many of you have noticed that certain financial blessings only come at certain levels you never cross 30,000 mark if somebody blesses you with 200,000 it will finish and return back to that range it, your understanding pegged you like the thermostat of an iron you know how an iron is you program it to be this hot when it gets there what happens it breaks that's it there are people who will never cross 100,000 give them one million they will laugh only for one week that money the, the behavioral patterns that come from faulty thinking will alter their behavior and make them act in a way and manner that reduces them back to the mindset of those who are hundred thousand allocators so it's not enough to just claim and say i'm a millionaire there is an understanding that resonates with that level of living and you must upgrade in your mind it's like resonance in physics remember those who are science-based there's something called resonance in physics that when you hit a tuning fork is that true at a particular frequency every other object within that environment that is the same frequency without touching it starts resonating that's how it is every result you have in the spirit has a spiritual frequency mental level that calls it when you 
want a result that is higher than your level of thinking it cannot resonate to it so your mindset must rise let me tell you when it gets there it will come in a heartbeat forget about the physical activities that act themselves to manifest it in your life that's that's little issue but we focus on who will bless me and how it will come that's that's not the issue just settle it in your mind you have programmed yourself truly to be successful when you want to know the true secret behind a man's result don't look at the physical result under study the understanding of that man you see that you get blessed from successful people not just by benefiting from the result of their success unfortunately that's what mediocres do they are obsessed by the result the tie the shoe the watch the car the um, anointing the miracles wheelchair no there is an understanding that helps that man to partner with the holy spirit so that that kind of result be produced when you have that construction then you are ready for victory the price of mental transformation are you still living like your yesterday and expecting tomorrow's result it doesn't work that way sir you will never never be able to receive results at the mental state that brought the challenge that has pegged you let me tell you what challenges are challenges are a proof that your current level of understanding has reached its expiry level the moment you are confronted with an, a supposedly unsurmountable challenge is a proof to you i teach the school of ministry students that challenges are a letter from your future to you saying i am there and i am real but your mental state now cannot take you there challenges are a letter from your future to you saying i exist i am real but you will not arrive there with your current level of understanding i am passionate about god exposing my area of ignorance it doesn't embarrass me some of us are so egocentric that the moment you are aware that there is need for upgrade in an area it embarrasses us you must be flexible enough to admit that where i am is a reflection of something i do not know are we together do you believe this apostle i don't have friends everybody hates me it's a lie there is something about your understanding that keeps creating that reality apostle money comes and it disappears yes there can be demonic issues but the demons don't just come and act foolishly they act upon a mindset that can host them the day your mindset becomes hostile to their presence that's the day you break free that's why true deliverance after casting out the demons there must be a reconstruction of your understanding to make your environment no longer conducive for the activity of demon space it is almost vain to lay hands and cast out demons and leave the same mindset that brought them you are only recycling a journey of endless suffering that's why when demons find out that a particular man of god does not have intelligence enough to holistically secure people's deliverance the demons are in a hurry to leave they mock you before you raise your hand they go knowing that their access point is still there the door is open are we together something about your thinking is responsible for your limitation there is a way africa thinks we have subsistent thinking there is a way men of god think that don't give them results there is a way they think that they get results please every time you see a man of god a system a businessman whatever commanding results don't enjoy the flamboyancy of the physical results but if you really want to receive you must be able to labor to buy into their understanding so the bible says this let this mind permit this mind philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 permit this mindset this thinking this construction this set of understanding to be in you that was also in christ jesus and then things will respond to you the same way they responded to jesus born around a manger still didn't matter upgraded his mind 30 years he was to live 33 and a half years and he spent over 90 percent of his life committing to development and in three years he did something that through eternity will not recover from listen listen hear this advice never be in a rush 
to manifest physical results in your life. Don't be in a rush to start business. Someone met me one time and said, Sir, what the way you are looking at me? I don't know what I meant prophetically or physically. He said, what business do you think I can do? I said, none. You will fail in every business you do, no matter how simple it is. And this is the reason. It's not because you are lazy. It is because you do not get the understanding of a prosperous person by default. Sincerity is one of the seeds for greatness. So you may be sincere. It's like someone who is very sincere, wants to transport you from one place to the other, but cannot drive. Will his sincerity take you there? As well-meaning as that person is, it's not if you die, it's when that car will capsize. Don't labor to show physical results. You try to buy a shoe of 100,000 to make a statement, I guarantee you, your carelessness and your wrong thinking is going to spoil that shoe. You'll be surprised that you never kick it on a wall. But in one month, the shoe will open up. Something about your wrong belief will mount pressure on that state. Your mind is saying it's a lie. Your physical realm is not agreeing with your mental realm. Something will happen. I've given you an analogy again and again. Take a poor person, take someone who is one of the least workers in any business organization or any company, put him in the director's office for two weeks. Don't tell him anything. Just put him there and say, you have unlimited access to this office. Do you know what he will do? Number one, he's going to steal. Are you seeing the mindset? He will steal because he knows for sure that he's only there for a short time. Number two, he will not clean and arrange the place. What can I get? so things the mediocre what can i get not what can i give he will sit down watch television drink all the juice in the fridge snap himself take selfies and then try to what can i steal oh there's one carton of water if i take five nobody will know that's a mediocre that's the reason why he will remain where he is in two weeks he would turn that office into his mindset but take a great man to a room that is messy cobwebs everywhere and he sits down his mindset refuses and say no this is not you whoever has your mindset should sweep the room and so he sweeps the room whoever has the mindset should clean the room in five days you come back and see the same room no cobwebs he would have bought a rug to put there as at the time he was deciding he didn't have money but his mindset told him how it will come is the last the most important thing is to plan. There is power when you set goals. This is a renewed mind. A poor man will say, I beg this Nigeria, I don't have any father anywhere and remain there. After one year, he has not been able to buy a rock. Something about our understanding is responsible for the way we are. Is that true? I look at myself and I look at the dimensions God wants to take me and I look at many things I do not know that is responsible for my current level of results and so I continue to search find out if I know what follow Runsha Alakija knows then I will be a billionaire in dollars correct listen respect results don't trivialize results results are not luck especially predictable results predictable result time is a revealer of the accuracy of your convictions when you see a result that is sustained it was based on laws it wasn't based on magic i can dash you one million but you cannot become a millionaire for five years by mistake no sir it's a lie i can lay hands on you temporarily and you can even lay hands on someone the wheelchair and leave the person but brothers and sisters you will not organize crusades for two years non-stop when intrinsically you have not received that grace the bible never said the donkey talked forever he talked for a moment and his mouth was shut the bible never said the rod bordered forever psalm 78 verse 41 a scripture that has become a national anthem in this place it said but they limited the holy one they limited the holy one they were in the wilderness and they limited him can god make a way can god make a way can god make a way the bible says they limited him as mighty as god is brothers and sisters we can limit him through our understanding we can limit him 
Someone met me one time and said, Apostle, God doesn't want to encourage me to love. I said, what's the meaning of that? He said, I've told God I want to buy a Dick's Bible. I've told God I don't even want clothes for myself, just spiritual items, messages, anointing oil, all these kind of things. And God, nobody is even help. And I said, show me the paper where you wrote them down. Show me the scripture you, at, you, you put on them. And he said, no, I don't have anything. I said, so if I were God, I would do the same thing. Show me the paper. Where have you gone to the market to find out how much anointing oil is? That's a proof of faith. It's a sign that you know it will come. Faith is conviction and the action you take based on that conviction. Are we together? Yes. Let me tell you how to know people don't walk by faith. They are vague in their expectations. Vagueness is a sign you are not sure the result will come. The Bible says, give us. He told you who to give. Number two, he says, this day, then, what our daily bread? Give us this day our daily bread. Specificity is very important in manifesting faith. So that when the result comes, you are sure that this is what I released my faith for. Is God speaking to us? When you package your physical environment without the requisite mental upgrade and transformation, you have only flattered yourself. It's like throwing your money in a basket because everything will disappear. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen, especially for we who are young. I know that we live in a society that mounts pressure on a gentleman and a lady to show. Uh -uh, you finished school four years ago till now. You can't even buy a nice jean. And so we go out of our way to try to paint our physical world to look like a reality that we have upgraded ourselves into. And we keep, you notice that you keep rising up and falling, rising up and falling. Your physic, you try to fake it, your mindset brings you back. That's what happened to many of our loved ones. I've told people, why fake something that can be real? You don't have to fake it when it can be real brothers and sisters hear me you may be in a small one room right now no carpet no recharge card no nothing you are using a, a simple phone that you don't even know the name there's no name on it you just bought it somewhere don't allow that disturb you if you can take the word of god the beautiful thing about your mind is that it's not limited by time and space continue to upgrade yourself in the name of Jesus, I may have Gary today, but I will feed nations. And you study the word of God and it's constructing your mind. There is he that stirreth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Ah, so an attachment for things is why money doesn't come. You write it in the name of Jesus. I have no attachment to things. When God brings them, money is a slave and a servant. Never to become a God and a master. I am a giver. And then you study again. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So that ye having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. So it's God that can make all grace abound. That means I don't need to worry about how the results will happen. It is God's office that allocating how the physical results will manifest. Are we together? You begin to study. You see, the Bible says love never fails. That means if there is anything that is failing in my life, when I add love to it, I can turn the results around. So you construct your mindset. Let me tell you the first thing that will happen to you when your mind begins to transform. Your environment will start fighting you because immediately your friends and your environment, your thinking will start making you act in a physical way that will make them say, what are, are you the only one who is a Christian? What is all these things? We are, we are talking about all of this in, I beg man must walk. And he said, no, sorry, I don't speak like that again. With all due respect, something is happening to me. He said, eh, you... You better finish all that grammar and let's come and soak Gary. They are trying to pull you back. Say the devil is a liar. Say it again. And they will pull you back and say, it's true. Let me go back, Jerry. This koinonia thing, you are just talking like fools. Even God knows. Will I lie? I'm like that. I'm, I'm not. And you start complaining and reprogram yourself back to your current state. 
while people are watching football you buy a book 500 naira and you sit down when people are hilariously celebrating birthdays when they don't have any money god just opens a door 10,000 naira and you just say ah my birthday is tomorrow kai will i die like that let me enjoy myself are we together your birthday clothes 8,000 whatever else you buy you cook and the money has finished and you feel good about that day and continue suffering or someone can say this is my birthday i may not be a millionaire overnight but let me make it the last birthday when by this time one year i should at least be able to have options for the food i eat we don't make that decision we don't study what are you doing i'm browsing something what who is that um, somebody he i mean very powerful is a wonderful christian and he's speaking minded of great people say i beg i want to watch one film it just came out am, am i mocking movies no please don't don't misunderstand me but i'm saying if you continue to flatter yourself and not commit yourself to personal development you will never be great I was talking with a dear friend today and I was telling them gone are the days where people think ministers are daft people they are just people who manipulate the minds of people ministers are very intelligent people it takes a lot of intelligence alongside spirituality to be able to communicate thoughts I was coming with one of the protocol persons and when we we're coming I was asking him what he's doing now and he said he wanted to go into public speaking and I said wow I said really everybody is a public speaker the moment you are a leader in any field you are a public speaker public speaking is all about communicating thoughts it takes intelligence it takes psychology it takes leadership it takes content not just that god sent you and say go to america go to um whatever and then you go and stand and say well the most important thing is the miracle that will happen right now don't worry what if you like be sleeping while i'm talking you will soon suspect you and say you are a herbalist because the foundation upon which the power comes you see our incompetence raises the propensity for suspicion especially where you know that there is the lavish anointing of god upon your life you must have both a sound word and intellectual balance so that as you are communicating the word of god there is a a synergy with your result anybody that listens knows that no 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 this person has paid his price i will be silly believing that he should not be at this level of results say in the name of jesus i receive grace to pay the price of mental transformation i buy the truth and i sell it not hallelujah one way we transit mentally is to find out those who are current reflections of our aspirations and then to buy into their thinking and their paradigms here's how the bible puts it it says follow them so not everybody is worthy of being followed it says honor all men but you can't follow all men listen there is this african trado african mentality of loyalty to people ideas and systems that are obsolete and do not have capacity to make you great listen the bible says and david served his generation every generation has a curriculum of understanding you must understand the generation with which you are sent to minister to and be able to construct your mind to understand their needs and how best to communicate it i'm sent to minister to all men but i always tell people that the age range of my influence and my impact is 15 to 50. If you are within the range, age range of 15 to 50, you are within my generation of influence. Now, that does not mean people like our daddy and our elderly ones here, I will bless you, but you will be surprised that Bishop Oyedeko and Papa Adeboye will be more useful to them than a young man like me. Is that true? Because they grew with that generation. If you're in ministry here and people tell you are ministering to young people, you better rejoice and don't think it's an embarrassment because that means you'll be in ministry for a long time. If you're in ministry and every of your member is at least 60, 65, I have a very sad news for you. You are not going to last because um, those people are at the level of their life where they are interested in legacy. 
don't tell them speak well no not at that age my brother they are writing books and mentoring another generation we laugh at those in children's ministry and say ah you as big as you are those children in 20 years will become leaders now in the world we have young people i foresee times when in the next 10 15 years you will have presidents in their 20s young people whose minds are malleable and flexible the world has grown enough to discern results more than biological age when you have results they allow you look at france has already set the pace now with their prime minister other nations will follow through a time will come when if you are not competent early you will join a queue that will never reach your turn forever i want you to believe what i'm saying it is true it is good that a man bears his yoke in his youth pay the price now pay the price now you may be laughed at now but pay the price are we blessed change your perception change your paradigm don't focus on just starting business as wonderful as that is or getting a job as wonderful as that is pay the price pay the price to build your mind then your job I have said it again and again I'm not necessarily talking about money but you don't make money off business you make money off your understanding you don't become great off the physical things you do you become great off your understanding May the Lord cause us to be men and women of great understanding in the name of Jesus. You've heard me say it again and again that we will all be great. But the greater part of the news is that we will all know ourselves. You will see it happen. Yes, you will see it happen. We may not look like it now. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. It says, and it doth not yet appear until you see the quality of children that our generation will produce filled with the holy ghost from age two why because a healthy mindset is the head of that family loving god because you understand the principles that at age 60 you look 30 because both the joy and the peace and the prosperity of the lord together have constructed and extended your life in quietness and peace that you will be called Dula and Hefziba, unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life. And people ask you, how are you doing it? You say, I can reproduce it again and again. It was not luck. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, help me. Grant me grace to be passionate about transforming my understanding. Stop complaining about the physical results you do not see. Brothers and sisters, that should be the least of your concern. Lord, deliver me from a fake life. Are we praying? Deliver me from a life that tries to show I am there when I am not there. I receive the patience. I receive the patience. I know that I'm not going to become a millionaire overnight. I will not become anointed overnight. I receive the patience to carefully build my understanding. Lift your voice and pray. There is an understanding that will make me an exceptional man of God. There is an understanding that will make me an exceptional wife, exceptional husband, exceptional career person, exceptional businessman, an exceptional politician. I focus on mental transformation. I pay attention to look for men and women who are a reflection of my desire. Your future is somebody's experience today. And the Bible instructs that we are transformed by the word of God. But again, by following them who through faith and understanding, allowing our minds to rise above our cultural limitations, everything they have told you growing up, you will never be great. You are poor. You are small. You are in non-entity. You probably have failed again and again in life to a point where you do not believe that there is such a possibility for favor. Something has told you you will never be a good wife. You will never be a good husband. It could be friends, backgrounds. I'd like you to pray and say, I cast down every imagination and every thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. I bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. I decree and declare that I am well able, 10 times better. My life has no limitations. My only limitation is the voice of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I am limitless. Hallelujah. 
listen don't listen to what i'm saying and think i'm just talking nonsense if you don't believe what i'm telling you you'll fail in life yes you will and you will live an angry and resentful life our society is full of very angry people do you know one of the reasons why people are angry is not because of their challenges it's because of their understanding and their interpretation of it the bible says to rejoice in the lord rejoice in what if you rejoice in your certificate one day it will make you angry the day you are not promoted if you rejoice just in your husband alone your wife alone your child your car your business all those things they fluctuate but it says rejoice in a constant factor called the lord and again i say rejoice and your joy will never have a reason to bend when when you see people happy and making merriment and rejoicing sometimes they say ah these people are lucky if you know what those people are going through half it may kill you but they have made up their minds that their joy is not defined by the things around them they understand that joy is a fetcher in the realm of the spirit you use it to draw from the wells of salvation it's not circumstances that the bible says the joy of the lord is your strength meaning when i lose joy i lose strength and satan understands this so he will orchestrate it i thought you said you will enter a relationship by january you even open your mouth and told people now it's november oh, my sister and you just say hi how about god there are many men in koinonia now when they see me you are already responding to it but the joy of the lord oh lord i give you praise i thank you where is the god that brought the servant of isaac to come and meet rebecca that same god will connect me lord i give you praise before the arrival of the man i continue working on myself to become a woman of virtue that the day that gentleman sees me he will never be able to sleep again good preparation what do you do while waiting for your miracle among many things praise and prepare mm. praise and prepare is god blessing us yes you will never and i say it with all humility you never see me putting my hand on my chin and say hi life you say why now i say nigeria are you not seeing what is happening I choose to be joyful I choose to make merry in my world there is absolute peace the world you talk about is the one your mindset created oh in my world there is peace and love and joy apostle you see what is going on in this country I know but I know that there is a God in heaven he was not dethroned he's alive hallelujah he's alive apostle are you hearing that terrorists are entering churches and bombing everywhere oh i understand that as the mountains surround jerusalem there is a construction i am happy joy is a defense you plant fear and plant hatred and before you know it what you used to believe you now stop it and throw it away no be joyful prophesy to your neighbor say be joyful say to another remain joyful amen yes when two people are fighting the first thing that disappears is laughter so when you cannot laugh and you are happy before god something is wrong oh god i'm here again Abba, you say better come and answer me what is all this thing i'm saying is it that you are not seeing my own prayer request or is it that apostle son is not touching my own what is all this i keep writing this thing and when you the devil say please continue i i beg you continue you frustrate satan when you look at your challenges and rejoice before them he says what then do i do it's a sign you are not living in the flesh are we together you get up in the morning and there's no food and you can have a sarcastic roommate or neighbor who says pastor gary has finished though they say it with sarcasm are, are you do you have people like that around your life yes they will say to me please prosperity confessor gary has finished there is soup but no gary i tell god there is already soup just help us with gary they try to mock you but do you know mockery is a mystery every time listen every time men are mocking you it's a sign something has left heaven and satan is trying to use men to stop it read your bible every time they mocked men when the mockery was at the apex the result was almost arriving when we started out in ministry many people mocked and said nonsense and said all kinds of things 
and the Lord told me just continue to rejoice and celebrate and hallelujah look what he's done and will continue to do by his grace make up your mind that you are going to be a happy person make up your mind from today's teaching that you will be joyful apostle nine o'clock my rent must be paid my brother anger will not pay rent your your annoyance will not even add to it so you better be happy because even physically it can make some, what is making you joyful like this and you say i'm smiling in the midst of the storm i say storm what storm and the person comes in tell your loved ones to be happy our generation of young people are becoming unnecessarily old because of stress you see somebody 20 years old they tell you he has bp <laughs> sir what are you thinking about saying my life i'm 20 i'm not in a relationship like, ah, are you joking what in the world is this what's what's wrong with you listen to our character building series work on your mind what did you watch which movies have you been watching that have raped away your patience but when you see somebody rejoicing always happy you come back from koinonia i'm happy somebody is grumbling in the car you just say well god bless you you arrive home you are happy what will we eat well they may not be food and truly sometimes it can be painful but lord i give you all the praise how long will i keep dancing for as long as the answer comes let me tell you waiting for miracles is like getting pregnant i will never have the privilege of having that experience but one thing i know is that i've been in the hospital many times to see the joy of giving birth to a child for as soon as you travel travel in joy brothers and sisters the god who promised you will bring it to pass oh yes i have seen men celebrate the victory of trusting God I will hold on if I perish I perish if God said it I believe him is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am God is speaking to you. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen, brothers and sisters, hear me encourage you tonight. Be patient with God. Be patient. Be patient with God. It didn't take you one day to build that understanding. Just continue with God. Apostle, it's been three years I've been coming for Koinonia. I can't even pay my transport. Don't worry. The word of God is working. The day the miracle will come, not even your prayer will stop it. God says it's too late. When your mindset has built it, no. A day will come. In one month, you will see cars in Koinonia. You'll be like, oh, it's a season. It's not a season. The, if the car is being given to you now your colleagues are saying my brother won't you buy a car don't worry don't go and kill yourself trying to get loan anywhere just calm down leave the issue of loan and stay with God take your Okada with honor and give God praise the day to come it will come in a grand style I assure you You have only two shirts. I've noticed this is the only thing you wear. Well, I'm not ashamed of it. At least I'm not a thief. I will iron the shirt. It's faded. But I thank God you are seeing it now. I was looking at some of my photos today. So I'm not even very... I looked at some of them and I said, Ah! God, you are faithful. What are we saying? You are so faithful. Listen. Let me give many of you a message of hope at your level i was worse than how you look now so you better encourage yourself and say if i'm at this level and i'm already smiling like this it means when i get to a level higher than where i am is joy unspeakable and full of glory number four what's the third price is the price of being skillful write it down the price of being valuable the price of being skillful Proverbs chapter 18 verse 16 it's become an anthem in koinonia the gift of a man and I add the gift of a man that's been identified 
developed and added to with excellence take note not just the gift of a man the raw material potential gift no sir it won't bring you before great men the gift of a man an ability a potential identified developed are we together now and then alongside excellence when you serve your gift with excellence the bible says it will make room hallelujah and will bring you before great men nobody celebrates potential we recognize potential but we celebrate potential that has been developed the world we live in rewards value you must be able to rise to a point where you provide value that is needed and useful not value that you know your value must be needed and useful the kingdom of god is built upon a reward system listen carefully the kingdom of god is built upon a reward system money being only one of the rewards ease is a reward for being valuable are we together now very important proverbs chapter 13 verse 15 it says good understanding procures favor good understanding gives favor good understanding is like a pregnant woman when she gives birth the name of her child is favor it says but the way of the transgressor a transgressor is not a sinner the way of a transgressor is hard hardship has a formula you can predict it good understanding giveth favor but the way of transgressors is what you must be skillful nobody stays close to me and refuses to be skillful you must be skillful we train the leaders in this ministry to be skillful the workers everybody you must be skillful oh i can sing wonderful but will don muen call you because of your voice have you worked upon yourself what do you know about singing the truth is that many of us at least to an appreciable level we have discovered areas here and there in our lives but the challenge for many of us is the mental and physical inertia that laziness to develop ourselves to a point where we get to a point of unconscious competence everybody shout it after me say competence say it again competence let me tell you something i've learned about competence competence defies age gender tribal and racial um, differences and, and all of and sentiments i have seen people rewarded regardless of where they came from i've seen people rewarded and blessed different fields listen anything you are doing if you do not plan to be a leader in that field don't do it are we together i will never commit my energy to anything that i will not be a leader in whether it is ministry whether it is business you may start small but your the those who are rewarded in any field are the leaders of the field in the academia the professor collects the highest salary why because he has been able to upgrade his mind and access value to that point where he deserves it you may be a student or a lecturer or a staff or a worker but if you have not risen to that level of competence you may never have the privilege of access make up your mind that i will be competent say it i will be competent say it again i must be competent the law of value your value when developed decide who pursues you your value when developed decides who pursues you Mike Mudok teaches that your a problem is an invitation for a reward. A problem is an invitation for a reward. Until there is a problem that you can solve, I teach our school of ministry students that you are unnecessary. Herein lies the mystery of people ignoring you. When you are not valuable, you will not be a friend to anybody write this down discover and develop problem solving skills 
discover and develop problem solving skills be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored be a master brothers and sisters what we do that you call ministry is solving problems you know I've said it again and again many people get angry when men of God are blessed because many people carry they propose that understanding that men of God are lazy people who just receive free money from people if they believe that men of God eat the church tithe and offerings and they buy cars and buy houses it may be true for some but it's not so for most men of God become blessed because they are offering value that the value is spiritual in context now I am teaching you is that true I'm reshaping your mind I'm adding value to you the system of the kingdom is every time you dispense value whether you sell it or give it free you are authorized to be rewarded are we together now you only have a problem with a man who you see blessings in his life whether financial and otherwise and you cannot see the value equivalent so when I look at a billionaire like Bill Gates I see the value equivalent that's why we don't harass him if I look at a criminal who is not offering any value yet his bank account is fat then I know that the equation does not balance before you ever criticize a blessed man examine the value now you may not have risen to a level of perception where you think what is doing is valuable enough to bring reward but it still does not matter everybody say I will be valuable say it again I will be valuable I will be skillful become a master at something koinonia and wave poverty goodbye become a master at something if I ask you what are you a master at and you cannot tell me in one word at best you will wallow around the realm of mediocrity and never rise up to be something the concept of being multi-talented is good but those who are masters in life are known for something there must be a skill that sets you out then other skills are auxiliary supporting skills that lift you are we together now I'm not only a man of God and many other things but most people know me as a man of God and they may think that's all I am and that's all that I do there are many other aspects to my life but there is always a skill that opens the door that skill that brings you to the table of greatness then you leverage upon that and other gifts and talents are now supporting is that true yes you must be valuable now the oil in Nigeria and Africa is having a lot of problem fluctuations here and there and you can see that the whole nation is moving down that's a sign that we were never offering real value are we together if we we're offering real value the depleting of the oil prices should not affect our GDP necessarily because there should be skilled labor there should be captains of industry and people who are skilled because we are largely depending on oil there is very little reward this uh, our society pays very very little reward on meritocracy the people the those who deserve things are not rewarded but in certain parts of the world when you are content even if they hate you that reward for sure will come to you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you may you be valuable being valuable will drive shame out of your life I tell you this being valuable the Bible says study to show yourself approved it says a workman that needed not to be ashamed there is a relationship between ignorance and shame are we together there is a relationship there is a correlation between ignorance and shame those who are angry insulting every blessed person insulting those who are making things happen in society are those who have not paid the price to identify their giftings their ability their skill their talent and to invest time resources and humility to build themselves to a point where they become leaders of their field I've made up my mind that in everything I'm involved in I will be flawlessly competent it's a commitment I've made to myself and I pray that you make that commitment tonight never settle the enemy of your next level is the success of your last level be careful 
failure does not make people fail it stimulates them to go high but the moment you begin to achieve results there is a chance that you will be complacent I will be valuable become a master solution provider there is no mystery about wealth it's not a miracle it's not magic it's a system a reward system of the kingdom remember that I said your value on its own cannot bless you it must be developed everybody say developed there is a season of refining your value one gentleman sent me a text in the course of the week and said apostle i'm starting ministry i don't know exactly what to do but i believe that as i start i think i hope i'm getting what he said correctly i'm starting and i know that god will bless me just speak a word i said no sir it's not a word that moves ministry a word is over you then principles guide you as you walk obviously that gentleman will not last one month he will be angry at the neighboring churches and be angry at members who come and go and not know why they are going you hear people complain why will you come to my church and receive miracles and go away and they think the solution is just prayer man of God change my story yes God can change your story but the men of God or the men that come to your church are human beings they respond to value by the time you continue to give people information that are needed and useful and they watch their lives transform the bible says he makes me lie down in green pastures you cannot make them lie down but you can make the pastures green then they will come and lie down they never visit green pastures when it is truly green they lie down information that is spiritual information that is transforming information that is needed and useful well researched and intelligently communicated backed up by the anointing of the spirit that's the kind of information that stays in today's world and in today's church any other information outside this let me tell something with members members are very funny they can say ah you know you say something that is complete rubbish and somebody stands up and says my god and while they are doing that you are so impressed with yourself and next sunday he never comes again members for you are we learning how was my preaching today ah, i mean i can't even start i mean it was it was it was strange and instead of the man of god to be honest enough to admit that and try and go back and trust god to help he said you mean it i mean that's that's it sir this message is a, is a bestseller and then the mem the person does not come the moment somebody opens a church near you in a heartbeat they will leave you because they were never loyal to you they are loyal to themselves and their commitment to their transformation and if you lose relevance and you cannot be a strategic contributor to their growth spiritually and otherwise then there's no reason why they listen to you i've committed myself that nobody listens to me and just says this person well, well just a daft no 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 it takes a lot of study it takes a lot of labor research commitment i'm committed to doing it this is the key to remaining relevant are we together you must be skillful write this scripture down we're not turning for time's sake genesis 41 um okay let's just look at two verses genesis 41 the whole scripture is from verse 14 to 46 that's the whole context from verse 14 to 46 but please give us 14 and 31 this was Joseph now the Bible says then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh are we together now he began to interpret Pharaoh's dream and then to proffer a solution and in verse 33 now therefore let Pharaoh look out for a man look at a politician after he finishes marketing himself he said Pharaoh it's not like I'm saying I want to be the one but you since you are smart who has committed himself to being that valuable look for a man who is discreet and wise and when you find such a man mm, when you find such a man do what he sees he programmed his own promotion when you find that man this is the level of result that should be given to that man 
set him over the land of Egypt and Pharaoh said unto Joseph for as much as God has shown you this there is none so discreet and wise everybody say mastery it's leadership this is called leadership pace setting trailblazing that no, this is not competition this is the reward that comes when you labor and stand out. Competition is in the realm of mediocres. You never see planes clashing in the air because there's enough space. It's cars that move around and have traffic for a very long time. You seldom see traffic in the air. There is space for champions. Hallelujah. Say I'm one of them. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, for as much as God has showed you this, there is none so discreet and wise. Let's continue reading. Um, Thou shalt immediately be over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. Go ahead. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have said thee this day over all the land of Egypt. Did he ask him what tribe? Did he ask him, Are you a Jew or you are this? You have solved my problem, you have reward. And Pharaoh took off his ring the ring in his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. Go ahead. He made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him, bow the knee and he made him ruler over the land of Egypt. Let's see something interesting that happened now. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh and without thee shall no man authority through competence shall no man lift his hand or foot in the land of egypt let's finish it two more verses and pharaoh called joseph's name but whatever that is that's a very long name there and he gave him to wife asena free wife getting a wife becomes easy when you are valuable this is the revelation god is giving us yes you can clap getting a wife becomes almost effortless when you are valuable God programmed that way. Not everybody will produce the same result, but there must be a token, a token, a sign that you are going somewhere. And Joseph went over the land of Egypt. The last verse, how old was he? And Joseph was what? This is somebody's lifetime achievement. He did it at age 30. If you got born again at 30, you are behind time. I teach on the graph of life. You can get my message. That's a sign that you need to catch up. And when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the land of Egypt. Your competence can give God space to lift you. Your competence can give God space to lift you. Make up your mind to be valuable. Pray in one minute before we talk about the last point and then we'll pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to be skillful. Lift your voice and pray. Plant in me a resentment for mediocrity. Plant in me a resentment for average. Being a local champion, being satisfied by little results, being celebrated by mediocres, competing myself with people who are not even doing anything. I receive grace. Are you praying? In the name of Jesus, I declare, I decree and I declare, go ahead and pray. Lord, I will rise. In business, I set myself to become a leader in that field. In the mighty name of Jesus. In my career, I will rise to a managerial level. I will not stop till I reach the apex. I will not celebrate the mediocrity that has come with my background. If you're a northern and pray hard, pray twice. In the name of Jesus, the mediocrity that comes with my territory, I, I declare that I break through it. If I need to take certifications, I set myself to personal development. If I need to upgrade myself in knowledge, I receive grace. If I need seminars and training, I receive grace. If I need to submit myself consciously for mentorship, I receive grace. Grace to follow those who through faith and patience i will not waste my day again i will turn my laptop to a university i will turn my android device to a university i take advantage of the information on the internet in ministry in business i find out the leaders in my field and i press to know what they know hallelujah let me tell you how to know you are becoming a leader when somebody is following you. 
if there is nobody following you to learn from you you are not a leader you claim you are a businessman show me those who you have raised because wisdom is justified by her children most people who follow you are people you have mentored unconsciously you were minding your business producing results and your result became too obvious to be ignored the book of mark says all men seek for thee please if you truly are part of this ministry resent mediocrity are we together resent mediocrity doesn't matter whether you graduated with a pass or graduated with whatever you can re-engineer yourself re-educate yourself then you will change your finances then you will change that talk that 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 statements they always make they will continue to jay at you and say Saul killed 1,000 David killed 10,000 competition will never leave the habitation of mediocres there is a realm you must rise to repeated mistakes are a sign that you are in ignorance before you take out any physical step again go for knowledge number four pray in the spirit for one minute thank you lord jesus the word is changing me i receive grace hallelujah the fourth price and will be done for today please i want to have everybody's attention because what i'm about to teach you is a very big secret most of you may think you know it but i want you to listen to me with your spirit listen with your heart the price of building quality relationships is the fourth price you must pay if you want to establish extraordinary results in your life the price of building quality relationships relationships are advantageous connections connections relationships are advantageous connections the easiest way to be wealthy and to be blessed in life is through relationships i've taught you this i'm repeating it so that you will understand the easiest way to be blessed in life brothers and sisters is through relationship relationships are powerful relationships are irrefutable there is no champion without quality relationships relationships are currencies they can buy anything money can buy anything money can buy relationships can buy it the only reason why money is useful is because there is a human being at the other end to collect it that human being can choose to say my relationship has paid for it i've said it again if you use money to pay for everything in life you are not working in wisdom now money is only one of many currencies relationship being the highest at the cadre. second only to godliness and your spiritual connection let me tell you something of all the currencies that men used to purchase results in life physical money notes currencies is the least of them there are seven currencies i hope that by god's grace i'll teach it next year seven currencies we use to purchase results in life everything in life is bought it's just that money is not the only currency relationship is a priceless currency higher than gold higher than the dollar learn this god called abraham alone and lot who was related went with him that was the only thing lot did and he became stupendously wealthy relationships can determine the next course of your results and lack of it can keep you stagnated almost for a lifetime please i want you to learn this the presence of a quality relationship in your life can define the next level of your success lack of it can stagnate you sometimes even for a lifetime you are one quality relationship underline quality you are one quality relationship away from your next level of results believe me on this you are one quality relationship away from the next level of your result 
you know all of this already my emphasis is not just to talk about the relationships but to be able to guide us on principles i've noticed believers know very little about relationships this is why many of us have been grounded although skilled a few scriptures four of them one amos chapter 3 verse 3 please write it down the bible says can two walk together except they be agreed modern day interpretation two cannot work together unless they be compatible there must be similarity in their paradigms and understanding two people cannot become friends when there is a large difference in their perspectives there must be similarity you must believe similar things about god about life about money about family it qualifies you to be friends second scripture very very touching scripture proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24 proverbs chapter 18 and 24 it tells us that he who desires friends you must sow that seed proverbs 18 and verse 24 lets us know that relationship is a harvest meaning that until you sow that seed there is no harvest of relationship it says a man that had friends must first show himself what friendly and trying to show yourself friendly will require you for bearing and even sticking closer than a brother most of us want the harvest of friendship and relationships and we never sow the seeds you don't go to a farm at around this time waiting to harvest when you did not plant relationships are harvests we must sow the seeds Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. Read with me. One to read. He that walketh with the wise shall do what? But a friend of foolish friends. What will he get? It didn't say foolish people don't have a future. That's not what the Bible is saying. The Bible says you are a product of your environment. He that walks with the wise shall himself be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Please write this down, everyone. Relationships do not maintain themselves. Relationships do not maintain themselves. It takes commitment on the part of all the parties involved to maintain relationships relationships do not maintain themselves this is a fallacy that many of us must be delivered from relationships do not maintain themselves it takes commitment on the part of all not some all the parties involved to maintain relationships please listen to this and you will be surprised that you will multiply your success relationships do not maintain themselves apostle people don't like me show me the seeds you are sowing the seeds of friendship are we together now apostle nobody wants to walk this koinonia people serve they say greet one another they don't even greet me no sir how to maintain relationships this is the crux of the teaching how to maintain relationships i want to give you seven keys every one of us make sure you learn these keys if you truly learn these keys i give you a guarantee those outside is dark but make sure you're writing those online connecting everywhere i want to show you the reason why your favor might be delayed number one the first key to maintaining relationships is avoid competitive jealousy write it down key number one you cannot sustain quality relationships until you are ready to avoid like a cancer competitive jealousy we're going to read all the scriptures every scripture and giving we're going to read so media please help us on that wise i'll give you a number of scriptures proverbs 14 verse 30 quickly please then we'll look at 27 verse 4 proverbs 14 and verse 30 the bible says a sound heart is the life of the flesh are we together read the b part it says but envy or jealousy is what rottenness 
it has a a disease effect to your bones let me tell you something competitive jealousy destroys you jealousy is like a wound competitive jealousy destroys you believers are very very competitive people jealous people you bought this car i buy it too you bought this suit i buy it too if you know i'm not just saying it for koinonia alone but this is something i've observed this is one of the reasons why many believers worldwide especially in the african continent we are obsessed with the passion to prove points and so we do not have the patience to allow time and preparation to come to fruition men of god compete with themselves and all kinds of things there there are healthy dimensions of competition when you're speaking from a business perspective and you can challenge yourself and spoil yourself to excellence but the church has a plague of competitive jealousy members koinonia is quiet thank you jesus because that that means that the holy spirit is pounding on this is exactly how result i love you too much and i must teach you this Proverbs 27 verse 4. Many of us fall sick being envious of people. Listen. Very, very powerful description. Look up please. It says wrath is cruel. That means it's not good. Don't do it. Anger is outrageous. But compared, you know, in comparison, who is able to stand before envy? In other words, envy is worse than anger. Wrath is cruel. Anger is outrageous. But who is able to stand before envy? Envious people never get results in their lives. They live their lives in bitterness and pain. Could this be why many of us do not maintain valuable relationships? Last scripture, Proverbs 14 verse 30. Okay, we already have that. We read it already. Proverbs 27 verse 4. We'll just leave those two avoid competitive jealousy say in the name of jesus i receive grace to be patient until the word of god manifests in my life i reject jealousy i cast away jealousy from my life lift your voice and pray in one minute it will sting your ego but brothers and sisters this is god speaking pray the spirit of competitive jealousy I take it away from my life please pray envious of my workers at work envious of my business contemporaries no envy is sin it's not just bad it is sin sin against yourself you depress yourself there are many people that don't sleep in the night this lady was my junior in school she's now married and i'm not married you are envious this person i was the person that that trained this person he's now a millionaire i'm no longer i'm a pastor this is my son it's all those jealousy and envy kill it now lift your voice and pray in the name of jesus i come against it satan you will not destroy my propensity to quality relationships competitive jealousy god bless you number two very quickly what is the second key to maintaining relationships i was surprised when i was studying this i found out that a, a research was done and it was it was told that one of the top three reasons why relationships do not last is because of evil speaking backbiting and gossip so the second point is avoid gossip backbiting and evil speaking the Bible calls it ill speaking. Statistically, you can go and check it. The top reasons why relationships break. Give us Titus chapter 3 verse 2 please. And then Proverbs chapter 6 will read from verse 16 to 19. Avoid gossip, backbiting, speaking evil. Unfortunately, and with all due respect to the body of Christ, for some reason, the church in Nigeria, I don't know if it's because of our African background, we are experts at gossip. 
experts at bad biting experts at speaking evil to speak evil of no man are we there to be no brawlers but gentle showing all meekness unto all men to speak evil of no man it is amazing how there is an appetite in people to talk ill and evil of people there are believers that come to church only to come and find out what is wrong are we together you speak evil of people we speak evil of our parents we speak evil of leaders pastors business people we speak evil of our government we speak evil of anybody if it is not you every other person has a problem you will never maintain good relationships like that and you will lose out on opportunities for cheap victory is God speaking to us avoid gossip gossip is a great sign of weakness gossip is a sign of mediocrity it's a sign of lack of confidence in yourself it's a spirit I'm sorry to say it and please don't be offended most of us the homes where we grew up from that's the norm that's where we got this mindset everybody talks about everybody gossip backbiting speaking evil Proverbs chapter 6 from verse 16 to 19 Proverbs chapter 6 just write it and look up I'll read it these six things does the Lord hate so God hates it these six things does the Lord hate seven are an abomination unto him we're reading to 19 number one a proud look number two a lying tongue number three hands that shed innocent blood number four a heart that devised wicked imagination there is such a heart feet that be swift in running into mischief 19 a false witness that speaketh lies and the last of them is what he that soweth discord it didn't say among men among who you find them in every church and every ministry experts are joining the heads of nice people together hey jimmy i i wouldn't have told you but I've, I've, do you know have you noticed that every time koinonia comes there's a way pastor alpha looks at you <laughs> i will just you about it later it's devilish it's devilish it's devilish you are sowing seeds of discord there are many people who were happy friends until a wrong information came in between them there are husbands and wives that live in hatred because a third party was introduced adam and eve were living in harmony until there is a third voice you must be careful that voice is ruin quality relationships how many of you God wanted to lift you until somebody came in with a report and say sorry you how many ladies would have been married now but someone who sows seeds of discord sorry I I overheard somewhere that you like this lady are you are you blind I just came to advise you are you blind this lady that has lived like this, she was my neighbor growing up. So it's, it's something I know. Is that how you hate your destiny? And the brother goes back. Be careful because when we pray during miracle services, we pray very wild prayers and tell God to pull those any and everything standing on the way of people's progress. And you must be careful that that's not you. Because the prayer will be answered anyway. Are we together? He that soweth discord. Do you know that gossip can be habitual? Meaning even if there is nothing to say, because you have trained your mind, you will always, you just see somebody pass and say, ah, let me tell you something. I didn't plan to talk, but no. Don't laugh. Almost everybody is guilty of this. So when it's time to pray, who will cry before God first for yourself and say Lord I'm guilty I am very very guilty are we together yes worship team standing to worship I you see how this guy is standing that, that's the guy I'm telling you hey you don't know that guy I saw him around that area yesterday he likes the lady he likes it. what is your business 
for heaven's sake what is your business are we together yeah what is your business gossip backbiting ill-spoken words you just hear that somebody is rising you say who who is rising no i need to do something about it don't become like that ill-spoken words the appetite you see every time you talk bad about people i want you to remember that you are destroying god's creation you must stop it if put yourself in the shoe of the ones you are destroying when you tear down people and destroy them how many people tear down men of god you don't think about their churches what happens to their members while you are destroying them what happens when you are talking ill of a pastor what happens when you are tearing him down what happens when you are insulting the pastor's wife think of what happens to her reputation it affects her leadership where experts are doing it it's a habit that i trust that god will break from us because many of us this is what drives friends from us come pastor alpha god brings your destiny helper he holds your hand in two weeks in two weeks everybody knows everything about you ah i came to apostle's house i saw him counting dollars don't, don't mind that quietness oh apostle is rich you think it's an information you are giving and god is saying you see this person you are not a candidate for my help carry your trouble and go away and say ah but god is going to help me no we have destroyed our lives destroyed opportunities how many people would have gotten jobs if they knew how to keep quiet do you know some people so gossip that they gossip even about themselves they have it's an obsession if there is nothing to talk about you can even be the person to act the drama yourself i beat my wife i just want you to know honestly and you see listen the thing about gossip and ill speaking please listen this is a lesson for all of us to learn the thing about gossip is it is like lost whoever is the object there is the one you will tell the information to including a child imagine me now coming to talk assuming pastor alpha has a child that is grown but because there is an appetite you are walking in a house and you are now talking kite boy this is your father now wow. you are poisoning the mind of the child what do you think happens now are we together we must repent from the spirit of backbiting and gossip romans chapter 16 verse 17 please give it to us quickly gossip terrible backbiting terrible now i beseech you brethren mark them which cause division and offense is contrary to the doctrine that we have learned do what to them what is the scriptural remedy? Avoid them. Avoid them. Listen, hold on. Let me teach you something. Be careful when you partner with gossip because very soon the person gossiping will need favor from the one he's talking about and you will be the scapegoat to use and secure that favor. A typical example is workers, people who work in their profession your boss your superior they come and meet you and say this is our boss said so 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 and so and they gossip when promotion comes what do you think happens you say hey, boss i i just came to appreciate you and to confess something sir let me be honest i've been talking about you you see he has bailed himself abby but sir this is even the milder part of the story the worst one is i'm about to tell you someone else who joined me because he's looking for promotion and all of a sudden a boss that says see me by three o'clock you come back and say pack up your bags because next week you are leaving this company why sir please leave my office seed of discord gossip is cancerous backbiting 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 you must avoid it like a cancer number three the third way to maintain relationships avoid offense avoid offense what is offense the ease with which you get irritated angry and resentful is called offense offense is a measure of the ease 
your ease of volatility there are people who get offended you can just look at them and uh -uh. it's like this your cloth did you iron it well and they say you are insulting my pedigree what no 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 there are people who are volatile the ease with which you get irritated angry and resentful is called offense first corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 first corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 talking about love now it says love does not behave itself unseemingly seeketh not her own is not easily provoked or anger if you are truly walking in love i don't care what your background is you will not be easily angered there are people who get angry very easily very easily bros how now you say me i'm 10 years older than you i am please don't think that because me on a very good day won't you be saying money easily offended you see offense is a product of judging things from the lens of your own perception of yourself when you judge things from a faulty perception things will be interpreted from the lens of your own limitation offense refuse to be offended refuse to be offended there will be occasion for offense in every relationship from a marriage relationship a business relationship ministerial relationship you must make up your mind as a choice that the blessings that i seek to receive from the relationships god is bringing in my life is greater than any offense offense destroys because you see when you are offended one of the many ways you act is speech and every time you speak with a heart of offense usually the holy spirit is not in charge of that conversation you will talk in the flesh you can make it means that you cannot withdraw again many people have lost precious relationships because if they were a little temperous they would have regained it many people have lost business opportunities because of that offense is an advice it's an encouragement the bible says one of the signs that characterize the end of days is that many shall be offended let me tell you you are not a true human being if you wake up and in 24 hours there is no reason for offense especially if you are a leader people do things that should get me offended every day i do things that should get people offended every day an example is what i'm teaching now are we together now there are things that get people offended you must make up your mind that i will not be offended how many men of god get offended and they can't preach they get offended at home they come and climb the stage and you know that that preaching is a lashing down of something that happened between them and their wives and their children the kind of examples they are giving are not relevant to any other member unless their family so you know that this is a this guy is just talking to his wife or the neighbor or the worker using the pulpit offense makes you small offense makes you cheap offense reduces your worth let me tell you something about offense most of those who offend you or they know they offended you the goal is that their joy is in your reaction most of those who offend offend intentionally but when you grow above it you demonstrate that you are living at a higher level of living after this service now on your way home an angry driver an angry man something will happen that will offend you but you must make up your mind and say satan you're a liar i already see your hand i will not be offended say in the name of jesus i reject offense is god speaking to us number four how do we maintain relationships practice forgiveness practice forgiveness mark chapter 11 verse 25 then ephesians 4 32 please give it to us mark 11 25 practice forgiveness i don't know one relationship including the one of you and god that can thrive without forgiveness it's not god you are forgiving god is forgiving you all the time because there are people who really are angry with god okay i forgive you god let's get back into the relationship and when ye stand praying 
most prayer warriors miss this let me tell you why there is hardship in people's prayer lives it's not all about demons and when you stand praying what is the rule forgive comma if ye have ought against any that your father in heaven may forgive you your trespasses it's amazing how we pile up people in our hearts some of us have physical books physical books like police reports where you write this sister jane embarrassment sam laughing at me pastor alpha shouted at me the other day while he was preaching and you write everything protocol department <laughs> their own star 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 they offended me ushers i was falling before everybody and they were watching me i injured myself and you write it down then you leave everything and say father don't you know that i'm human and god says really it's like a small child that begs you for something then you give him and say give back and he refuses that's exactly what we do you can never live in this life without forgiveness what is forgiveness forgiveness is giving forgiveness is giving it is giving pardon and mercy forgiveness a disposition where you are ready to let go even before the offense happens forgiveness forgiveness is a, is a dimension of giving if you are not a forgiver you are not a giver not forgiving is one way of manifesting greed it's not just refusing seed forgiveness but let me balance very quickly you don't forgive just to make peace forgiving to make peace is one of the benefits of forgiveness but the primary purpose of forgiveness is to release yourself so you can move forward because there are times the people you forgive are still not ready to receive it let me be very honest and let me balance forgiveness is only useful when there is repentance a willingness to turn away forgiveness is useless to the person you are forgiving if there is no repentance it is useful to you let me show you what offense does um can i use someone sam please come watch this this is what offense does i want to move forward but i think sam is standing my way and so i'm trying to push him will i move forward holding him i'm trying to hold sam i can't move forward myself this is what forgiveness is he can be there not even deserving it but i release him so that i can move forward i can leave him and his trouble there if he accepts that he is wrong and turns then we make peace and we can work together if he refuses i still forgive so that i can move forward let me tell you the most wounded in the refusal to forgive is the offender or the offended the person who was offended is the one who is most wounded it is painful that the person who even offended you is not even aware and plans to do it again because it was a product of mindset so your assignment is to have a disposition where you forgive as a leader people will offend you every day people will do wrong things every day you must forgive hallelujah everybody say i receive grace to forgive say i let go everyone i'm holding in my hands holding people hold them in your heart i will never forgive my mother except i may have said my own and you can never receive blessing i will never forgive my father for what my father has done if I have a knife, I will kill him by myself and say, Daddy, die. I'm the one killing you. I will never forgive that person who raped me when I was four years old. I will never forgive that, uh, what they call it now, that brother. He went out with me and broke and scattered my heart. Please forgive so that you can move forward. Forgive so that you can move forward. Turn it into prayer in one minute. Lord, I'm tired of holding people. I release right now I let go that boss in the name of Jesus I release my husband I release my wife I release my co-worker I release my business partner I release the man of God I release my head of department 
I release my escorts. I release the members in my department. I release Joshua Selman. Make sure you pray. I release everyone who has offended me. Because I want to move forward. I want to move forward. Practice forgiveness. Hallelujah. It says, And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake forgave us. Very quickly, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Okay, Ephesians 4, verse 32 is there. And then give us Luke chapter 6, verse 37. Luke 6, 37. Let's hurry up. Luke 6, 37. Luke chapter 6, verse 37. It says, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. In other words, every time you judge people, you are scheduling seasons for yourself. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Make sure you practice this. Make sure you practice this. Number five, very quickly. How do I mean quality relationships? Be tolerant. Be tolerant. Forgiveness is different from tolerance. Forgiveness is somebody's shortcomings that he hopefully will adjust from it. Tolerance is somebody's personality or a default belief system that may not change. You have to incorporate it as part of that person's living. There are people, I wish I would tell you everybody around you will change. There are people who will not change. So you switch from forgiveness to tolerance. You accommodate that limitation in their life, factor it, and build a system around it. Is God speaking to us? Yes. I have many friends, all kinds of friends. And just like me, they are very funny people. Everybody has all kinds of attributes. The same way I am to them too. But it takes tolerance there are some things in me unfortunately may not change tolerance you don't you today i like everybody around me to talk but say i don't talk you don't need forgiveness what do you need tolerance. or you you talk too much i just ask you a question where is where is uh, my trouser you say uh, the other one i didn't ask you about what happened where is my trouser please tolerance Your destiny helper may be a talkative. If you are tolerant to the talkativeness, then you receive the breakthrough. Everybody in your life cannot be you and cannot be like you. If everybody was like me, the world would be a terrible place. You would think the world would be a nice place. No. You don't want to know some of the boring aspects of my life. This world would be a sad place. <laughs> you will only be studying and reading and sleeping. What a world. I am so happy for people who are not me. They add flavor. I benefit from the joy of them not being me. You must have a high degree of tolerance. Colossians chapter 3. Please help us. 12 and 13. Colossians chapter 3. It's called forbearance. You must tolerate people. Put on therefore as the elect of God. Holy and beloved. Bowels of mercy kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering 13 forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as christ forgave so also do ye forbearing one another you have business partners you need forbearance are we together you are in your office working you need forbearance in a ministry like this you need forbearance everybody cannot be you brothers and sisters learn this Oh God, change them. Wonderful prayer. But they have their wills. If they don't change, does that mean you will not move forward? Tolerance. Number six. The sixth principle for maintaining quality relationships is that you must be a contributor to the growth of the other party or the parties involved. You maintain relationships by being valuable to the relationship. You must be a contributor. There are parasitic relationships. Relationships are meant for mutual benefit. Maybe not equally mutual in, in terms of degree of contribution. I cannot be your friend and be at a high level with you when you are not contributing anything in my life. Ejimi is my friend. He contributes greatly in my life. 
I contribute greatly in his life. So there is a basis for continuity. Are we together now? If you are not valuable to a relationship, that relationship's lifespan is very small. It will never. Please hear this. This is true for marriage. It is true for business. It is true for ministry. There are many people who complain and say, Joshua Selman doesn't want to be my friend, doesn't want to be this. And I say, no, no, I want to be your friend. It's just that I am passionate about value. Be a contributor. Money is not the only thing to contribute. Love, kindness, godliness. Are we together now? There are so many things to bring into a relationship. Not everybody is looking for money in a relationship. There are people who have conquered that realm. They need love. They need value. They need understanding. They need help. You must learn this. If you want a guy to come into your life, what value are you going to bring? As a guy, what value are you going to bring? Even the church and Christ, truly speaking, doesn't need anything from us. But because of his love, he limited himself to allow us space to be able to contribute something. That's why when we worship and praise him, is we, 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 we are not necessarily adding anything to him, but he has limited himself that way so that he can give us room for expression. Relationships must be mutually beneficial. If there are five people in a business and only two are running that business, they are the two who will be the closest of friends. The rest will just be freelance people around who will feel angry. Don't be angry in a relationship that you are not bringing quality value. Please, I want us to go back home and think about the reason why our family members do not value us so much. The reason why even in the house of God, it's true that we love everybody unconditionally, but we are not committed to everybody at the same level. It is according to contribution. Say amen. You must be a contributor. If you are helping me spiritually, you will be close to me. If you are helping me financially, you will be close to me. If you are helping me in terms of the love for God, if you are helping me fulfill my assignment, you will be close to me. If you are not doing any of this, I love you, but you can't expect to be close to me. The same way, if I'm not contributing meaningfully to your life, you love me, but I can't be close to you. Relationships are based on contributions. I want you to learn this wanting friends around you to be so committed without anything to bring to the table is flattery brothers and sisters there must be a commitment no matter how little it is it may be prayer it may be love it may be rest sister you may not be educated but you can bring love you can bring patience are we together yes you are the one that when the guy is getting sad he said no calm down it may not be so you are the guy that will say no 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 my dear calm down i know she offended you but take it easy there has to be a contribution you walk with the holy spirit you are rebellious you are disobedient you don't pray no secret place and you say lord why are you not close to me and he says what is all this are you not hearing what the apostle is saying you have to be the mutual contribution give me time i give you more of myself become a contributor to the growth of the relationship number seven so we wrap up for tonight practice genuine love the last key to maintaining quality relationship practice genuine love underline the word genuine there are many people whose relationships are purely based on what I will get in as much as I have spoken about value brothers and sisters if the only basis for relating people is what you will get you are a selfish personality whether as a husband as a wife as a man of God as a member as a worker as a career person as a business person it is not always about what you will get it is about who you are are we together my life will be an ugly life if the only people in my life are just those who can contribute to me no while we were yet sinners unable to contribute anything in due season Christ died for us Proverbs chapter 10 verse 12 please quickly Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12 hatred stirred up strife but love covers what let me tell you something Brothers and sisters, 
it is one proof that the friend you have whether it's a love relationship or any kind of relationship will last when you truly love somebody you will make very legitimate excuses for their weaknesses it will be difficult for you to find reasons to throw people away if you can throw people easily it's a sign that you don't deserve to be close to them love can cover a multitude of sins I see people in relationships, not love, really, all kinds of relationships, and the ease with which they get offended. No, sir. If five people come into your life, not love relationship now necessarily, five people come into your life, none of them can stand two weeks. The problem is you, not them. Are we together? Hatred, stirred up strife, but love covereth. How many sins? That means there is nothing anybody does to you that cannot be covered when there is genuine love. The secret to peace, all kinds. John 13, 35. John 13, 35. Then give us 1 John 4, 20. 1 John 4, 20. John 13, 35. John 13, verse 35. By this shall how many men? All men know that ye are my disciples. Not if you pray in tongues. Not if you have a Christian name. If ye have love, not for God. Love for one another. Loving God is not necessarily the ultimate proof that you are walking in love. Because it says that if you love God that you do not see. Or you don't love your neighbor that you see. How can you claim you love God that you see? Listen brothers and sisters. This issue of loving one another is something we must indoctrinate ourselves in I, I have told myself i cannot hate anybody in the house of god no impossible impossible truly speaking i'm not just saying it i live a very peaceful life <sighs> apostle why are you angry can you no i've been delivered. been delivered i live a happy and peaceful life peaceful life very peaceful life very peaceful life by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another do you love people or do you use people you can use people you can use a relationship you can use a wife you can use a husband you can use a boss you can use employees pastors you can use members you can use workers the workers in this ministry know with all humility that I love them with all my heart. I love the leaders. They know it. I'm lavish about it. I love them with all my heart. How could I ever hate the people that so serve with all their heart? This is why some of us never get the anointing. This is why many of us never command results. Our hearts are full of hatred. There is always one bad story to say. No. First John 4 verse 20 and then we round up. First John 4 verse 20. God has spoken to us tonight. If a man say, even if his name is Joshua Selman, if Joshua Selman says, I love God, like many Christians say, and hated his brother, he didn't say hated, he didn't describe what kind of brother and the offense the brother did. He just said if he hated his brother, please read on if you're a Christian. What is he? He didn't say he's an angry person and God understands. That person is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen, how can he love God that he had not seen? Church, we must not only love Jesus, we must love ourselves. More pastors who en we experience levels of the anointing when they switch just from loving God and extend it to loving men any pastor that's why I honor the Lord for the ministers around I mean Reverend Dr. Tende is here God bless you thank you so much a number of other ministers scattered around every time I see them come visit like this I am very blessed love there are times I pick up my phone and I just send all my pastor friends text messages and I just tell them how are you how is the work the Lord bless you the Lord honor you there are times that I just do it to my friends. Some of you, you never do it. As, has he ever done it to me? You want a harvest of a seed you are not sowing? No, sir. If you had sown that seed, the friend you used to know, 
that is now a great man you would have maintained a relationship that would have blessed you but when you had privilege the number he had then that you had you did not invest in it and now he has changed his line only those who blessed him have the new line you are not part of them and you are angry and grumbly and say all these pastors i remember when god started helping me a lot of people were offended and say what is all this thing eh? i tried to call apostle he cannot call you call you say protocol he doesn't know me and i say you can imagine two years you have never asked whether god whether koinonia people are eating whether how did you collect offering is god faithful are there demons attacking you can i pray you didn't send any text and then you just hear that god is faithful and you want a prayer request and just call and demand no it's not done that way it's an investment you don't get anything from it when you don't commit to it there are people who don't honor anybody they don't recognize anybody they don't care just call and say look I have Bishop Oedipo's number C, Bishop David Oedipo, let me call. And you call, he says, see all these broken men of God. I will not pick if I'm him. No, sir. It's not because I hate you. They are busy maintaining the relationships that are interested in them. Please, don't make arrogant demands of attention over relationships you are not willing to commit to. A little prayer. I'm not talking of money. A little prayer. Man of God, how are you, sir? Just to find out. Mommy, how are you? daddy how are you pastor how are you it's been three years we've not seen i hope god is doing well god bless you and increase you they are noting it even if they don't have time to reply they are noting it the day they see that number there are many numbers i don't have saved but if i see them i know i know that this person cares a lot about the ministry how is koinonia some people are very sarcastic greetings here my name is this these are my problems you just listen bless you and I say, what? Just like that? No. There are people who only call when they need help. Sir, um, just to greet you. My mother has come again, no, honestly. Uh, my father has come again, no. My sister, remember the, the thing I told you the other time? You don't remember me? I, I'm sorry, was it last week? No, I met you June last year now. June last year. I met you and you are reminding me today. must invest in relationships you must love brothers and sisters i stand by the integrity of god's word and i tell you this if you practice these things before last koinonia it would have changed your life there are some of you this is what you need this is the revelation you need to enter the next level it's not like the job cannot come there are many people now that admission will start you're going to start disturbing our daddy prof and disturbing a lot of other people sir i remember it's me that sent you cv and says is it because i'm coming for koinonia and you are seeing me like that you've never done anything you've never said take five for life and all of that no 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 sir the, the uh, just to let you know that uh, by god's grace i'll be finishing now <laughs> you promised me in 300 level that you'll give me money for for project you didn't follow it up not in prayer not with wisdom no. please learn this practice this right now call write the list of the top 10 relevant people in your life and start investing in them and watch what happens to you because when a man loves you everything he has loves you too if a millionaire loves you his money loves you too an anointed man loves you his anointing will love you there are anointings that reject people yes listen to me the days that are coming are days when we have to trust god to sort our personal needs fast so that it can give us room to focus all this issue of coming to preach series just about tea and bread we're talking of nations our children are in trouble Man carrying things that belong to a generation. 
not a program, not a conference, carry mantles that are generational. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10. Verse 10. See, I have this day set you over territories nations and over kingdoms to root out to pull down to destroy to throw down to build God is giving nations like a man is about to die and he say you my estate in Kano is yours God is sharing nations and saying I, I allocate territories Who can sing for me that song? We'll bow down and say you are God. You know the song? sit down let's sit down we have to make progress tonight hmm. listen to me there are spiritual forces and controlling powers in every allocated territory every territory that is allocated has spiritual powers listen to me these spirits influence culture these spirits create negative patterns in the minds of people they are called familiar spirits there is a reason why they are called familiar spirits they are spirits that have dwelt with people they grew up with people i shared this morning during the church service that one time i remember i was in shiroro we were ministering in a crusade 
and I saw a group it was up to 15 or 16 people women it was a pattern I saw there the moment the women gave birth they became deaf and dumb immediately I said what is this it was no longer a sickness listen when you see a widespread of a pattern is a testimony that a controlling power is reigning within a territory every territory in Nigeria has the signature of the controlling powers there are territories where no matter how great the men study is the women that feed the men territories there are territories that are associated with certain things anger rage there are territories that are associated with early death you go to the territories and the youngest person is 60 years old but there are no children the parents use the children to live long controlling powers there are territories where you must end like your past you don't end like your future you can go to the u.s and spend 10 years and return back to the village in one room it's not about habits there are spirits there are many of us who have uncles who will tell you this one was a ceo this one was a customs officer but right now if you give him ten thousand he will say thank you what happened these powers there are churches there are territories where a church cannot survive five years impossible something must happen the man will die a scandal will tear him down something must happen there are powers when daniel began to pray the prayer was affecting the spirit of the medis and the persians the spirits that controlled medopersia his prayer daniel was not saying lord sort me out uh -uh. he found out that the time of the captivity of israel in babylon had come to pass and he started praying i daniel understood by books i read and i saw that by this time in prophecy we should not be in captivity how shall we sing the lord's song in a strange land and he began to pray and when he began to pray heaven don't mind the people talking nonsense that they don't know this is not about new testament and old testament is what happens in the realm of the spirit the moment they began to pray gabriel the angel that brings messages the angel of service that archangel left the third heavens and on his way coming to the earth he was hijacked from the second heavens by one who the bible calls the prince of Persia, not the demon of Persia. There is ranking in the spirit. A prince, not a traditional ruler. A prince. Let me tell you this. The foolishness of many believers alongside our pride is why Satan will tear nations down. All these childish teachings that continue to move around that negate the reality of the realm of the spirit and the fact that there needs to be the contention of the saints will destroy our generation. Some of those teachings are deceptions, activities of lying spirits. The Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and they will give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. We are watching darkness before us and we are pretending it is not there. We are watching a woman barren, her daughter barren, granddaughter barren. We say nothing is happening. How can you say nothing is happening? A grandmother raped by someone the mother raped by someone the granddaughter raped by someone you say nothing is happening find a way to believe it early in your life that there are controlling powers they don't attack you they are not interested in you they attack territories there are spirits that attack you 
there are spirits who don't even know who you are they were allocated to a territory when jesus was about to cast the spirit they begged him not to leave the territory we can leave the man but keep us in the territory <laughs> hallelujah please listen to what i teach you this is the redemption of our children is the preservation of God's program within our land. There is a spirit now that attacks age ranges from 10 to 18. Once you are more than 18, it does not disturb you. It's like Satan has plotted his graph and found out that the most useful age range now are our teenagers. He's not disturbing babies. He's not disturbing the young people. The old people already, they're already there. But those teenagers... I know this by the widespread pattern in our teenagers. Their resentment for God, their obsession for technology, they are outspoken that the vocal defiance that they have is the spirit of rebellion. And we are watching, saying nothing is happening. One day my child will grow and a child of 12 shouting at his mother and while he's doing it from every territory, they are doing it. There is a spirit making it happen. Do you believe what I'm sharing? There are some of us, we cannot talk to our younger brothers or sisters now. We are 10 years older than them, but you dare not open your mouth to talk to them. You just think they are being stubborn. No! It's a spirit. The spirit of defiance. The spirit of rebellion. When those age ranges become our governors and our senators, that's when you will see the full assault of darkness ah but not when we are alive mm -mm. Mm -mm. god has men elisha said tell no man to come and let him know there is a prophet in israel not there is a god in israel hallelujah you do a program now and you want to put it on mainstream tv if there is the name jesus there is the name Holy Spirit. There is the name eternal life. It falls under the same category as some of those words that we, they don't allow to be pronounced. Including God, Jesus. Ah. You tell a preacher to preach and there's no name Jesus. There's no salvation. There's no God. There's no redemption. What is he preaching? The most destructive manifestation of demons is their ability to manipulate the thinking of men it's not their ability to inflict sickness no that's cheap it's not their ability to bring death that's cheap but to keep a man alive and to hijack them whom the god of this world who blinded their mind the god of this world there are gods that station within territories there are territories where you don't find old men. The oldest man is 43. Because anybody that crosses it dies. I've seen territories like that. There are territories where all their men are dead. The territory is full of women. Because all the men die. Some of you know what I'm talking about. It was only the male figures in your family the devil took their lives away. And left the women. Was it not the firstborn male that was killed when Moses was born? Not women. Was it not the firstborn male two years and above that was killed when Jesus was born? Imagine all those women. It's a principle. So mothers are becoming both mothers and fathers because controlling powers are there. And while that is happening, we are laughing. You know, I've told you about a saying in my village that when you see your neighbor's beard, on fire get water and soak your own don't laugh the same fire is coming to you we must pray oh we must pray there are spirits we must pray when i came i was asking me about the testimony of the dear lady 
one precious lady that I came I met I saw you people so excited and I wanted to know what was going on and when he told me the story I say you see it now and someone would tell that lady that the only attack she has is the one in her mind are you joking are you joking I've seen demons so this is not something I'm just talking I've seen them the first time I saw a real physical demon it was then in the campus I was at going to the back of a generator there used to be a generator there and as soon as I turned I saw a real spirit and he said get back that's what he told me I'm not talking nonsense that was you read in a storybook they are not cunningly devised fables I've seen these spirits they are real I know what they do on earth I know what they do in families there are controlling powers that destroy marriages if you do not stand your ground I love you I love you is nonsense just keep going one day you will wake up and see the same woman you love that was there for you and this spirit will land on your head like a mantle and you see what happens to you what of men who kill their children have you not seen a trend recently now a trend of rape rape huh that all these guys just come and just rape ladies do you think those guys are just driven by desire are there no prostitutes no it's more than desire it's a spirit there is something it seeks to do sodomy is a spirit you know that right there is something it does and pleasure is not one of it spiritual intelligence we need to stay and ask god to teach us wisdom let us know his ways hallelujah i know territories where when you rise up if you dare open your mouth and say everybody come and celebrate with me see what the lord has done from that day you must go down joseph told his brothers i had a dream it's not my fault i went to bed and i had a dream the sun the moon 11 stars and the brother said that's all right they were the ones who were going to kill him listen we must learn to pray these spirits out of the way we must learn to pray these distractions you see the things that are happening in zaria now some of the developments the roads don't you think it's technology that is bringing it? It's a signature of the prayer of the saints. Shut down the prayer of the saints in this city. Then you will know what Satan has always wanted to do. I believe in the ministry of prayer. It is not the issue of being a Pentecostal. The days are coming when it will no longer be an issue of devotion in the morning or praying for a sermon. You are praying to secure your children. Listen, let me tell you, this day and age, listen, do you know if your child leaves home to go to school, you should pray. What happens to that child from the door of your house to school? That child is under the tutelage of someone you do not even know. by evening he will come back and ask you and ask you questions that you cannot sleep daddy what is this and you say who taught you say my teacher taught me your teacher yes sir controlling powers koinonia is not thriving just because satan does not know we are here is striving because of the invincibility of prayer fire i said it in the morning that there are departments in this ministry i supervise by myself and there is a reason why because of the strategic role that they play now every department plays that strategic role but because of the spiritual component the prayer department the worship team you always see me on their case with the leaders there is a reason why because let me tell you the truth when these instruments just become music we're in trouble when this singing just becomes entertainment we're in trouble when the prayer department just becomes a place of fellowship we're in trouble and the fire upon the altar 
that it shall burn day and night most churches have partners financial partners and that's all right most churches have protocol members that protect the man of god most churches have priority you know activities but the things that keep the fire are not there prayer zero worship zero let me tell you something brothers especially honestly if you are a man in this generation and this time and your priesthood ministry is not at work you are about to destroy your wife and children there is no such thing as pray for me again you pray your way and pray the climate open ah my wife and my child mother mary as you go to church pray for me that thing must end it is my prayer that the homes in koinonia don't become like shrines that they become real homes the proof of masculinity is not the huskiness of your voice is the is the dexterity of your priesthood i've advised us ladies watch out for these things in saying yes don't just say yes carelessly and say time is going the urgency on ground requires men and women who know how to burn the incense Please sit down. There are spiritual forces that shape the minds of people. A lady sent me a text recently. She just graduated. As soon as she graduated, she said she's been feeling like tearing her clothes and running on the street. Now, do you think an intelligent person will behave like that? It's a spirit. How many graduates have you seen that the moment they finish on their way going home, a little kekena pep just turned and left them there till a truck came and climbed them? How many people have you seen final exam, final paper, they just find something on the ground and say that's it, you are gone. There is no such thing that is just, it's no coincidence. It's the manipulation of spirits you have an assignment to sanitize your atmosphere let them know you are alive start with your atmosphere sometimes i walk around my house in the night especially when i'm around i'm just walking around my house do you know not too far from my house there is a graveyard i've not seen one ghost one one ghost where will it enter and come to my house I'm dealing with matters of destiny not, not a ghost coming from somewhere what business has the dead, the living, to do with the dead? I even wanted to buy the place. They told me that there are, there are graves there. Ha, apostle, don't buy. Why? Yeah, if you are dead, you are dead. One time... Archbishop Benson Idahosa came and met that they killed a fowl. I think it was an incantation. And he saw it and he gave it that they should go and help him and cook it. <laughs> they had already caught it. He said, why waste? Why waste meat like this in the name of nonsense sacrifice? God does not love wastage. He said, gather the crumbs that there be no wastage. See, let me tell you this. If you do not know the power of prayer, you will fear demons to death. hallelujah we sit down and allow spirits to roam around our houses i know a man true story in just years ago he was slapped by i don't know if he's a ghost or a spirit he he works then in the teaching hospital and he said he used to hear that means the um, what they call that place doctor where they keep mortuary in the night while doing his work true story you will hear like discussions you know like people have woken up and they are talking true story and one time he attempted he shouted according to him he said shut up and he i don't know whether he, he wanted to open the door or something i stand before the god of heaven and i lie not and the 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 spirit slapped him until that man died he did not recover spirits are real don't wait till you see them they are real 
my mother once told me a story they went to bury someone this thing did not I'm, I'm not sure it's more than six seven years they went to bury someone and physically as they were dropping the coffin fire physically fire came out and killed some people not parables not vision fire came out and killed some people have you seen people that they buried and you found a man back in your house all these things will remain when there is no prayer just saying i am the righteousness of god in christ hallelujah that's not the way it works we are legislators we enforce things we don't just wish things this wishing mentality will cost the church a lot no it's impossible who am i that the devil will not come jesus went to fast satan went to join him he was fasting satan was fasting too he was waiting there for 40 days for jesus who do you think you are that you will not come around your vicinity from whence comest thou jesus asked satan he said from voyaging to and fro there was not a place that he did not go to have you considered my servant job yes i came to his house it's only that he built a fortification and i could not access hallelujah right now people are afraid seven o'clock people have to lock up their, sh their shops in many areas they are losing in business why because some touts somewhere will come and waylay them and loot and steal money and the church is just quiet don't be like esther but be like esther parakatusiata you sense anything around your vicinity you don't wait to understand what it is tap your wife and say wake up when you do that twice three times one month the devil will know where to pass see let me tell you this whatever you allow to happen to your life don't blame god whatever you allow to happen to your family don't blame god i'm i'm waking us up that territorial dominion truly happens on the strength of priesthood not a need driven prayer hallelujah i heard of a man recently for one four years I, I'm, I'm i'm trying to be sure so that i don't exaggerate anything four years the wife refused to get pregnant the man was tired one day he came back from fellowship the wife was sleeping he came and knelt down and put his hand on top of her, her, her stomach and prayed that woman into pregnancy no i mean it if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking he was tired of this thing and said no he knelt down you just sleep you are my wife i'm the one who paid your dowry let me face this spirit of barrenness see there are times in your life you need to get agitated spiritually and stop allowing nonsense to just happen within your territory within your family hallelujah i was so encouraged when i heard it literally prayed not like impartation or yet no he sat down knelt down on top of his wife's stomach and prayed in tongues until that report changed you can pray some things out of your life and you can pray some things into your life there are times that you can put your job your 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 certificate on the ground and lock yourself from 12 to 6 you pray until where you did not apply called you our generation has not understood the power of prayer those who know how to pray are people who do not take no for an answer mm -mm. Mm -mm. they don't negotiate they decide and agree god are you in this if god says yes declare anything that stands the way hallelujah praise the lord a prayerless christian is a powerless christian a prayerless territory 
is a powerless territory. A prayerless couple is a powerless couple. A prayerless business is a powerless business. A prayerless ministry is a powerless ministry. Please sit down. Boy, our time is gone. The first key to territorial dominion is priesthood. Koinonia, pray. Don't just pray on Tuesday. Pray. Pray. You go back this night, trust God for grace. Even if it's 15 minutes, walk around your room a little before you lie down. Apostle, you don't know how busy I am. That is the excuse that is the door that the devil will use to enter your life. If you search for excuses, you will always find one. Let me tell you this. I have taught you and I pray you will believe it. Master the power of night prayers. Master the power of night prayers. A generation that sleeps all through the night into the morning is a generation that would not be powerful. I'm telling you this. See, there is a time when you will enter your Sabbath in experience. A young man, personally, now it's not, I'm not saying this is the Bible, it's my personal understanding that a young man who actually goes to bed by nine to wake up by six and you don't have time for your destiny, you are building rubbles. The night is when men who are men pray. The night is when men who are priests pray. The night is when men who are watchmen pray. The night is when gatekeepers of destiny pray. Let me tell you sincerely, I have not slept in days like real sleep to take out time and sleep. It's a sacrifice. You are supposed to get a job that God will use to change your family and your territory. And while you are sleeping, they send a letter from a parastatal. We need these 41 names in the list. And there are spirits waiting there to decide what name will be removed. And every other person is in a Habali shrine, forcing his name to remain there. And you are snoring away. Your, your sleep is the marker that will clean your name out of that list. You can stay and insist. I may not have access to the office, but I can pray. I can pray I've seen the ministry of angels in my life I know that angels are real I know that they are real when you pray there are times I've tried to look for things and I could not find them and I prayed and slept and in my dream I got up and went to where it was and I woke up and went there physically and carried it Many of us do not understand the ministry of angels because we do not pray. In the name of Jesus, every prayerlessness and spiritual laziness upon your life, I curse it now, this night. In the name of Jesus, all the movies, internet, browsing that distract you, I'm not saying they are wrong. But if it can sit down and distract your prayer life, I separate you from it now. It was in the night that Jacob wrestled with God and got power. It was in the night that God came to Solomon and he received something. Men receive things in the night. Don't waste your night. Charge your atmosphere. Sleep under a heavy atmosphere of worship. While you are sleeping, you are receiving. You wake up in the middle of the night and you know an impartation is ongoing. See, let me tell you, these are not things we are, these are things we have practiced for years. Strong worship in that atmosphere while you sleep. And you will keep having all kinds of dreams sometimes the dreams will show you the root cause of things 
sometimes you are hearing a message and in the dream you will start acting the message you are alive to the message oh lord help our generation help our generation help our generation in the name of jesus christ hear me if you are a minister of the gospel in this place that means you are in ministry or you are trusting god to be in ministry please wake up i deliver you from laziness hear me ministry is not about suits and agbada and protocol ministry is serious business you know all this and i say this respectfully to our younger generation most of these boys do not understand the gravity of attack that can come to your life when you are in ministry they are just happy and just loiter around in pride one attack will kneel you down you need to be powerful with god are we blessed number two goodness the second principle or territorial dominion is the power of faith Hebrews 11 33 the power of faith you cannot take over a territory when you doubt God you cannot take over a territory when you do not believe God Hebrews 11 Please read, everyone. One, two, read. Who through faith uh -huh, subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions. Listen, the Bible says this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. What is faith? Your conviction your depth of persuasion on who god is and the integrity of his person that convinces you enough to believe god and take action you will need the audacity that faith brings to reign in life life is not for weak people life is not for risk averse people life is for men and women who are courageous enough to storm the gates of destiny the Bible says that, listen, it said that Lot and Co were hijacked and captured. And Abraham said, what did I hear? You carried my cousin? Gather all the war men and let us go. Ah, courage. Courage. Faith. The righteous are as bold as a lion. That lion dimension is not supposed to help you harass people. The lion dimension is so that you will be able to stand in the face of situations and say you can bring your best shot satan i will still be standing it takes faith to build a church it takes faith to start tv ministry that will bless people it does not take money it takes faith first it takes faith to raise your children we are a generation that is obsessed with guarantee give me a guarantee that you will be there for me there is no guarantee anywhere in destiny please hear me everybody say faith when god called me to ministry i called my father and my mother and i knelt down before them and i told them god has called me all my life i'm going to be busy serving the purposes of the kingdom my parents said god bless you we bid you godspeed go well that's it i'm not doing well because the church i was serving before did not give me money no sir listen let me tell you this faith creates everything out of nothing did you hear what i said your house now is in your faith the money you need is in your faith please learn the laws of faith faith is predicated upon a revelation that god is able the ability of god and his integrity everything looks impossible till faith brings it 
God will never tell you what you can do. You know you have had God when what he says is bigger than you. When God told me of the things that you'll be doing with this ministry around the world, when God showed me and told me the things that you... The power of faith. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. Lift your voice and pray. Everyone, please pray. Pray where you are. Pray from the depth of your heart. Please pray from the depth of your heart. Pray everyone, you are praying in the spirit. it's a sacrifice you are making for your destiny. It's a sacrifice you are making for his kingdom. It's 
Shikaruta Salabara. Two more minutes. Pray in the spirit. Shabarada Balakata Pradegadesh. Skadebarada Balada Bakota Shada Pradegade Baladas. Emprata Kaparuta Shalabradegade Balad. Balabu shalabran digi di balas, ekhetela bradu shalabran digi di balada balada bo. Kebaru hasila bahasia da balada bo. Alleluia, Alleluia. Listen to me. Forget about the temporary inconvenience that you are going through you are building something for a generation you are building something that will last rain will come and go but what comes upon you comes and stays are we together now praise the lord let's continue the power of faith now faith is the bible says the substance of things hoped for and the evidence the tangibility of things not seen hear me everyone you want to take over territories you will need to believe in god not believe in an uncle not believe in an auntie not believe in an asset not believe in an investment you need to believe in god god is able I may not know how, but I know that he will build for himself what will bring him glory. Many Christians, and especially our generation, we don't command results because we truly do not walk our faith. We doubt everything, and we do not take God at his word. I've given you a little story years ago when I used to bank those days with First Bank, way before many of these facilities started coming that we now use to make banking easier. Then I would not have money at all in the bank. My faith was that rugged. I'm not saying do it. I remember those days I would pray and trust God for miracle alert. And I would stand up and start trekking to First Bank. I would queue for hours believing. Because I read in my Bible what things soever ye desire. When you pray, believest that thou receivest it. I took it literally. Many times I didn't find anything, unfortunately. But I didn't realize that what I was gaining was more than the money. I was gaining the flexibility of my faith. The, the ability to believe God at his word. Let me tell you this. When you are walking with God, you need to believe God. There are times God will tell you, wake up and go outside. You will go outside and nothing will happen. He will just say, go back. And your going out was profitless, but your faith is being developed. The idea is not for you to go and see or receive something. The idea is an exercise of your faith. So that tomorrow when he says, take this nation, you say, Lord, I'm able. We are well able. Unbelief is dangerous. My only limitation in my life is the voice of God and time. My only limitation in life is the voice of God and time. Time that honors the law of process. If God tells me to walk through this crowd to that door, I will not even see that rain is falling. I'm on my way going. Whatever stands my way, the faith that God gives. Do you not know that faith is a shield? You can use faith as a shield. He said, wherein you will quench all the fiery darts 
of the wicked. You are not the first to be persecuted. You are not the first to be challenged by evil spirits. It will take your faith to command victory. We are a generation that loves impartation. And impartation is important. But let me tell you something. There are dimensions of destiny work that impartation will not bring. It's a well you have to dig by believing God. If I perish, I perish. When God spoke about koinonia, I believed him enough to take action. When God spoke about the messages, being heralded by his angel and taking it around the earth, I believed him. Today we've seen all kinds of miracles over our teachings. You've heard some of them. That someone will buy a brand new flash drive from the place where he bought it and take it home brand new out of the cave slot it in and there are koinonia messages all how do you explain that that's what happened when faith listen you will never see the glory of god until you believe you will never see the glory of god until you believe where a generation that is obsessed with guarantee before we move your only guarantee is the word of god The word of God everything God told me about ministry about destiny I believed him I still do I still do from the days when we could not afford bonds and could not afford a proper meal I believed that was a career of the blessing from the day when I could not pray for one person to be healed of headache, I believed that his anointing was upon my life. And I believed that he was going to use me. We are going to pray one prayer. I'm going to change my style of teaching now since there is rain. I'm so happy for the rain because it will take away unnecessary formality and keep you to listen. So now you are going to pray. Help my unbelief. Lord, whatever it is that is killing my faith and not allowing me to trust you. Help my unbelief. I claim that I trust you, but it's really my uncle that I trust. I claim I trust you, but it's really my certificates that I trust. I claim I trust you, but it's really my skill, my gift. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. You are praying it for your destiny. You are praying it so that you can command dominion. Lord, I trust you. The grace to believe you. Believe you for my finances. Believe you to open doors. God is not a man that he should lie. God is not the son of man that he should repent. If he speaks, he is able to bring his word to pass. Please pray, pray. Shila parus karia da balara bara ba. Koinonia pray. He reigns. He reigns. He standing by my side to bring his word to pass he reigns he reigns my God is an awesome God he reigns he reigns he reigns he reigns Standing by my side to bring His word to bring Your word to 
Hallelujah. Listen, hear me. You need to shake off unbelief from your life today and say, Lord, I believe you. I may let everyone call me stupid, but I believe you. Let everyone mock me and laugh at me, but I believe you. I believe you. Your word is true, and I believe you. When you say I am great, I believe you. When you say I am the head, I believe you. When you say I am not the tail, I believe you. When you say Gentiles shall come to my light, I believe you. When you say their kings will come to the brightness of my rising, I believe you. Listen, there are some of you in this place. God has told you you will stand before nations. But as it is, you look so weak and you will not believe it. You don't know the village I come from. I cannot even speak English well. That's not what God is saying. Believe me and let me take you there. By myself. Years ago, when God told me he was giving me access to kings and people in government, I believed him. Our very first crusade, I demanded to see and let us share fellowship with the king of the land. We didn't have the opportunity to do it the first time. Every one of our crusades that we had gone, I demanded an audience with the kings because God told me he would give me access to kings. I believe God. It's none of your business who my father is. It's none of your business who my mother is. That's not what God said. That's not the condition for his word. I believe him. The same way some of you are here and God, you go to bed and you see yourself carrying the baton of generals. You wake up in the morning and say, it's a lie. It's not for people like us. We are the any house. Stop that, that ungodly talk and say, Lord, with all humility, I believe. Let it come. I believe you it was in Port Harcourt I was tending to a sick one of our sick aunties where I was staying in 2007 I was in Port Harcourt and she was on her sick bed she eventually died and I was taking care of her in the teaching hospital there and I was there we were running shifts and then from the I don't know which of the floors now I just looked at um, the window and all of a sudden I was caught up in a vision and in that vision I saw the international headquarters of this ministry I saw 37 flags and I saw white men I saw nations coming I said what is this and God said that's where you are going I believed him I said let's go oh God let's go I believe you God told me I will never beg one king and beg any man for audience. I believed him. I believed him. I believed him. Do, can you believe God? One day I remember growing up, I told my mother, I said, do not worry about the things that are happening. One day, you will eat and never have to beg for bread again and it will be in your lifetime i said it see the righteousness of faith speaks it does not assume you make statements that sometimes you are afraid my wife right now we may be soaking gary 
but in the name of jesus we will give to nations and when you say the devil will speak to your ears and say foolish man respect yourself my faith it reaches out to you i believe your word for me today my faith reaches out to you i believe i believe your word for me, your word for me today listen one day i was praying and the lord spoke to me and said son i will give you a gold mine i believed it literally i know it may have a prophetic meaning but i believed it literally until three years ago when three kings came together to give me 18.5 hectares of a gold mine god said it and i believed it see listen let me tell you this this ego and the feeling of saying let them not say i believed god and it was a lie if you don't throw that thing away to stand and trust god so what if you find out it's not god that said it you readjust and move this ego is why many people will not grow god said it but i'm ashamed i'm afraid let them not laugh at me i remember when god gave me an instruction to empty my entire finance it was a stupid thing it was suicidal but i did it and god told me i would never beg for bread in my life again i remember it was in this ministry god gave an instruction to empty the account of the ministry literally 0.00, .00 and i believed him stupidly believed him one week after that god brought a harvest that till tomorrow we will not recover from but I know whom I believed. If God says I will give you a house, believe him. If God says you will feed nations, believe him. If God says you will pay the school fees of a generation, believe him. Don't believe your ATM. Let God be true and every man a liar. Please hear what I'm telling you today. This life and this destiny I stand before the God of heaven and may I be forgiven if it's a show of arrogance but there are many things one of the things that God does with me is he mandates me to declare what he said before it happens there are many things that I've said today prof said something here that really touched me um, in the morning and he said that one of his daughters he remembered when we were meeting those days on campus and that I said that God is bringing mantle, a mantle of people for kingdom financiers. And he saw his then little daughter. She was rolling under the anointing and he looked at her and was wondering. And he said that she got a job and within one year bought a car of over three million. And he said he was surprised. When God says it, he would do it. If he did it before, he can do it again Same God right now Same God back now If you did it before If you did it before When we started the Koinonia worship team, I stopped these guys for many years from going for external ministrations. And I told them, I said, do you know why? I know what God showed me about you. That days will come, you will sing and nations will sing your songs. Stay and be dealt with by the Spirit. Those days, some of them didn't understand because they wanted to go for programs and I said, sit down. Sit down. Today, 
is amazing the way one by one it's already starting like droplets but it's an avalanche it will come and you will see the songs that come from here songs that will mentor nations songs of warfare songs of victory songs of the throne you see most times we don't believe men till it's too late we will say he said it all i believe him i believe you that's why you see me stand to teach you do you know let me confess true confession i was i had a meeting before coming here you know i had a meeting and then um just briefly met with a family and then a woman before coming preparing to come for koinonia and while i was preparing i was so tired i sat down and i didn't know which one to do to eat or to rest and i stood i was so tired and i was telling the woman i said my god all i want to do now is to sleep but i just got up i said i rebuke that statement there is a generation to mentor there are people to raise and she said ah, apostle i know you as soon as you are done with all this talk the zeal of the lord that is in you you will quickly go and prepare and stand up and truly you see me standing now i'm done here and i'm counseling for hours seven in the morning i'm out of this city just to go and just perform a function do a few things and return sacrifice but that happens because god said so god promised me that he will keep me strong and vibrant i believed him you do what i do in the strength of the flesh you will not be sick you will die I say it without exaggeration you literally will fall down and you will die one day my father warned me and said look my son just do your best take out time once in a while and rest I said I know and I believe I will rest but the king's business requires haste there are destinies to be raised there are impartations to come to nations hallelujah praise the Lord I went to bed to five it was as if i just turned my head and i checked the time and it was morning the last thing i remember was that i was going to take there was water by the side of my bed and a drink and i remember i was preparing that in five minutes i'll just turn and take a sip and i had slept it was already morning and i got up had to brush up on my notes to come why because when you are about his business he will maintain you There are things you cannot lie about not for long it will be clear see let me tell you this god has been faithful to me you see these hands i have laid these hands on different sicknesses and diseases communicable ones i'm not supposed to be alive today based on the things and the people i have touched You must believe God God told me forget about cars and houses focus on me I've raised men already to do that for you I remember when someone came and met me to give me a car I was happy and God said it's not your car just pray for him and let him carry his car and go I wanted to say God the next time you will give me lift <laughs> but I was happy Do you believe what I share with you? Can you spare me five more minutes? Are you tired? I know you are tired. You are just passionate. But listen, let me tell you this. You must love tomorrow more than today to enter that tomorrow. If you love your today more than tomorrow, the door has closed. Closed by you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When I was in secondary school and the fire of God fell upon us, we started a prayer group and a prayer movement called Operation Katakus. Yes. We would pray sometimes, immediately after preps. It was supposed to be a little one hour prayer. And some of these weak spirited people who are feeling sleepy would just tell them, look, go to your hostel and sleep. One hour. It will become a vigil i was made the timekeeper of the school in js2 that was the level of the hand of god that was upon my life 
quarter to five, someone would wake me every day without fail. Quarter to five. That was when I started having encounters with this. I didn't even know that they were angelic encounters. Fifteen minutes on the dot to five. Don't tap me. I wake up. Father, help this generation. In the name of Jesus. Help us to be so consumed by the reality of the realm of the spirit and the power that that realm wields upon this realm all you see is not all there is hallelujah so when you hear a word like you are blessed when you hear a word like doors be open many of us just say amen as a christian response to a man of god's prayer but a few people will believe god and take him literally and said when i said amen i said let it be so where is it oh god i said amen i expect an answer hmm. the last that i will give us and then we're done territorial advancement the last key let me five minutes and we are done the power are we ready the power of consistent results one of the kingdom keys allocated for dominating a territory is consistent results hmm. let me tell you this consistent results shows that there is understanding consistent results show that there is knowledge consistent results show that mastery has been attained consistent results years ago i started watching a man who would lift people off wheelchairs and crutches as though it was a joke he would stand and look at them and just pray a simple prayer sometimes even be sarcastic about it and throw the wheelchair and throw the crutch and said walk and that's the end of it in in about six years he raised about nine thousand crutches and wheelchairs his his church is full of crutches around the church i said this is mastery i must go down to see him he was in south africa and i traveled he's going to be with the lord now prophet kobus van rensburg I traveled to South Africa to meet him and I met him and I told him why I was here. I was not there for, for pilgrimage. I was not there for entertainment. I was there for business. I said, I desire this grace. I desire it. It is a grace. 10,000 crutches cannot be mistaken. No. Many unbelieving members, yet they were also raising crutches. You could see that they didn't have faith yet they would say walk and joke with it you see many times when the leader that you are under is carrying a grace you will cheaply receive that grace listen when you receive that grace and receive that dimension many times you will see how cheap it works some of you here who are under this ministry and under this covering you will go for meetings casually and just say let's pray and the power of god is here and you'll be as if you are acting drama and even you you have not really studied the dynamics of the anointing many people started getting prosperous in living faith before they read about prosperity it was later they found out they were even sinners because they were not tightened yet they were still enjoying abundance say okay lord forgive me now i'll start doing it properly some people were strolling and just saw prayer city prayer was going in and they said let me go and find out what is going on there and from that day they cannot sleep again till they pray because a grace came upon them let me tell you this results are governed by three things one light two please listen results are governed by three things one light two association three graces these are the factors that govern results in this kingdom never forget it light the depth of the spiritual illumination you have as it pertains the area 
where you want to see result number two association god called abraham and lot went with him and then number three graces if there is any area in your life where you are not commanding results check for these three things one there is a dimension of spiritual illumination that you are lacking number two there is a community of people with that grace that you have not honored and number three there is a dimension of grace that has not rested upon you it is easy to produce results when you know the laws that govern them hallelujah do you know let me tell you as little as this thing our, our time is up as little as what i shared with you is if you understand this mystery my brothers and my sisters there are dimensions that god has cheaply committed to this ministry you will enter into it like a joke you know it pains me when i see certain graces that are so lavishly available but there is no widespread testament of people who have entered that dimension the knowledge you have the spiritual understanding number two your association not just in terms of friends also the covenants the tribe that you come under that you are grafted into and then number three the graces that are upon your life any man who is exposed to these tripartite forces will be a strange man upon the earth when i traveled to south africa to meet prophet kobus van rensburg i'd wanted going to meet robert Lerdon and then charles and francis hunter unfortunately i couldn't meet them i sat down and i listed like an architect the graces that will construct the house i listed them and i searched for the individuals that had those graces like a chef says i need salt where do we buy salt sabo where do we this is how i listed these graces like a bee and i searched for them one by one i was very very foolish at a point in my life i knew that wisdom will be part of the graces that i would need for my life and i would need for this apostolic office i pursued dr miles moon mike Murdoch, and bishop david oyedeko these were the two dimensions of of wisdom that came to my life i saw the wisdom of god at work in their life and i said this foolishness must end i pursued that grace i pursued it with all my heart are we together yes results whoever commands results becomes the leader whoever commands results becomes the force to reckon with i submit to you that many of the dimensions that you see in my life and in this ministry they are not guesswork there is an exact knowledge that is back of them they will continue to be reproduced again and again when there is increase when there is the outstretched hand of god when there is favor there is prosperity when there is passion and hunger for god these are results please do not join the people who ignore results i'm wrapping up i know the rain is done but just just be patient make sure as they are coming out they are still listening please you are going to pray for result listen to me i told myself god there is no need to be in ministry if i'm not producing results that you bear fruits and that your fruits abide much fruits some of you who are visiting this place for the first time will go back and know that god is here you met him it's called results the next time you come you will not come alone let me tell you empty pews are proof of lack of results it's an uncomfortable truth but it is true are we together in fact empty anything emptiness is proof that you do not understand the laws that govern you i knew i saw the way pastors used to raise money now please i'm not being sarcastic 
with all respect and all honor to men of God and the body of Christ. But I saw the way people were being manipulated to raise money. I saw the way pastor's birthday, pastor, I'm, I said, no, this is not Bible. But then I asked myself a question, how will you eat? And how will the ministry thrive? And then I said, I have to go to the word of God and find out. And then I found out that God can open a door for a man that no man can shut. I found out that there was an exactitude to the blessing of God. Let me show you one of the most recent scripture I found. 1 Corinthians 29, 12. I apologize, we are wrapping up. 1 First, First Chronicles 29, 12. 1 Chronicles 29, 12. I saw this scripture in my dream. I was sleeping and this scripture came and I woke up and I saw it and I rejoiced. I said, that means God is shifting me to another dimension. Both riches and what? Honor come from you. You reign over all of them. It's a dangerous scripture. Both riches and honor come from thee. You reign over all. And in thy hand is power and might. Look at all the things we need in one verse. Riches, honor, power, might, greatness, strength. God is the owner. I saw it in my dream. I went to sleep home and I saw that scripture. I got up and I searched it. I said this is this if this scripture were a clot it would have faded by now I've prayed this scripture into my life see I stepped into the grace for favor when I prayed for favor for one month that was my prayer request not for a selfish reason Lord a man can carry favor bodily let me be an example of it do you know many times when I pray these things is so that I will bring it and you will receive it's not so much for myself when I received the grace for long life it, it was with speed the day I was coming for koinonia it was as if I was going for my wedding reception give me chance let me stand these people were singing and I couldn't wait for them to finish singing so that I would climb up I came with a grace that I did not have the grace for long life you can carry graces like a fisherman when you catch something and you push your hook you draw it force it out when you see what it is this kingdom is a kingdom of deep mysteries deep mysteries deep mysteries hallelujah both riches and honor come from you thou reignest over all and in thy hand is power and might and in thy hand is to make great look god is the maker of greatness when god selects you to be great he selects you to be the face of a generation it doesn't matter who thinks what or does not think it god has chosen this ministry God has chosen us by the privilege of his grace to be one of the major pillars of what he's doing in this generation. It's an honor we receive. He made it so. Results. We're going to pray. We have to wrap up. Listen to me. Koinonia, hear me. My heart is pained if your life does not command results. Let it first start from your life. Then we'll start commanding results over territories. Was it not Joshua that told the son to stand? Results. There are results that can shut down a nation in one day. A time will come, kings will come to seek the counsel of God from us. And say, what is God saying? He said, kings will entreat your favor. When God told me he would give me access to kings and I would speak to kings in this nation, I believed him. Listen, it's not pride. In two weeks, I'm going to be speaking to all the legislators in this country in a breakfast meeting. All of them gathered in one place. The International Conference Center. 
and I will be speaking to them the counsel of God when God says it I believe it listen it, this thing is not is not is not about a man I hope you understand what I'm saying results are powerful if you doubt results then what are you at results you must insist that my fig tree must bear fruit i'm tired of green leaves lord this fig tree must bear fruit he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water whose leaves does not wither is someone ready to pray please take two minutes blast in tongues and cry honor my life with results oh god results Honor my life with results. Please pray. Jesus the grace that will cause you to reproduce every result you see here may that grace rest upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the grace that will bring you into strange dimensions wonder walking dimensions of results may that grace rest upon your life I speak upon your life access to kings may that grace come upon you access to kings in the name of Jesus Christ access to kings in the name of Jesus Christ I have set before you an open door I decree and declare the kind of influence that God can put upon a man influence is not a carnal desire it is so that you can rise to a point where the nations can look up to your life in the name of Jesus the grace that can cause a generation to look at a man and follow Christ through that man may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now the grace for strange signs and wonders wonders of the spirit may that grace come upon you now may that grace rest upon you now
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Every man who must honor and recognize what you carry, I speak to them by prophecy in this season and in the name of Jesus in this month of October, I command someone must celebrate your grace. Someone must celebrate what you carry for the sake of his majesty. In the name of Jesus, I compel men to descend the grace upon your life. I compel men to discern the hand of God upon you. I compel men to discern the unction upon you. Father, we thank you for tonight. Let the name of the Lord be praised. Let me pray one prayer concerning favor and your finances please allow me pray it God sees my heart God sees how much I pray for you every time there is a dimension of the blessings of the Lord that I want you to step into and the reason is because it will give you the time to serve him I pray for you in the name of Jesus the wealth that comes by prophecy I speak to your life Carry that grace now. 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 I command your bands to be filled with plenty. I speak wine and oil to your treasury. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The kind of favor that the saints need to rise to the position of influence that will allow them legislate on behalf of the kingdom may the grace for that favor rest upon you enter into prepared blessings let me pray for you multiplied visions and spiritual experiences hear me the spiritual blindness that stops your eyes from seeing what God is doing I tear that veil now I decree and declare everywhere you find yourself I compel the people there to look up to you as you look up to Christ listen don't sit back doubting what you are saying. No. Every utterance is backed by the throne. I'm not speaking as a man. When God calls men, he backs them. And that every door you must enter in this season. Because we advance through the entrance of doors. I speak to that door. Let it be open for you now. Let it be open for you now. Indeed, it will be said about us that we are a people that the Lord has helped. Marvelously helped like Uzziah. In the name of Jesus. Father, we declare that our territory will come under the influence of your name and your grace. We will never give an inch of our territory to the reign of darkness and satan we will stand as watchmen until we see the reality of your power and your glory rest upon our land in the mighty name of jesus christ amen and amen our time is gone you are here and you are saying apostle i want to make it right with jesus apologize because of the rain we've had to stretch but you are here and you are saying i need a fresh start with the lord jesus we have just one minute for you please be careful no moving around carelessly so that we can have those who are coming out to come if you're on your way coming here whether you are inside you're outside i like you to boldly or you are saying apostle i really want to rededicate my life to christ i know the implication of this that you have shared 
please boldly summon the courage take a step of faith as we clap and salute them come and stand right at the altar here while i pray for you god bless you people are coming celebrate them as they come koinonia is this the best you can do those coming from outside please clear the way for them clear the way for them god bless you god bless you koinonia keep clapping let's celebrate them as they come to make jesus lord of their lives genuinely and truthfully hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.